Welcome to episode 16. Yes, yes. We have made it to the promised land almost. So at 20, I think is the, the was like the goal, right? Yeah. And yeah. then what, how many subscribers did we want? Um, our goal is to get to 500 subscribers. We're at like 170. 174, 175. Yeah. Um, now, something that's interesting about the subscribers is I was talking to somebody that watches it, uh-huh. and I asked them if they had subscribed it, and she's like, well, does it cost anything? So I know you have different subscriptions for different things, but if you're watching this on YouTube, we would ask you to subscribe and like because it it's a good thing for the channel and what but it doesn't cost any money. So you're just But if you want to donate, I can make sure there's a donation button. That's on right. There. Um but there is but yeah, you so you can just subscribe and all that and you can even uh, we typically drop these on Thursdays. If you want to hit the the alert button, you know you'll get an alert every Thursday when these drop. And yet, just subscribe doesn't cost anything. And our goal is to get to my goal is to get to a thousand, and yet five hundred as quick as possible. I'd like to. Uh, my goal is to get to five hundred by the uh, third quarter. We need to have like a subscription drive. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But you know what's strange though is that like people are watching. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, I, you know I, when I was on vacation, y'all haven't seen me for a while because I've been on vacation. Um, this Thursday would have been the first day, time they saw you in like two weeks when they dropped Thursday. Yeah. And With you and uh, Daniel. Well, I haven't I even had a chance to watch for it. for three weeks. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I didn't record for three weeks, weeks straight. Um, but that was cool. Um, but I, I was on vacation and, and met somebody for the first time. They're like, I feel like I already know you. I was like, well, how? Okay. Weirdo. They're like, no, no, no. I watch all your podcasts. I was like. Oh, wow. In Florida? <laughs> and I was so, uh, I mean, yeah, I was flattered. I was like, that's oh, that's, right. that's cool. that was really cool of them. Uh, so it, it just led to a great conversation. Yeah. Uh, I was in Old South Diner. I probably eat there once to three times a week yeah, yeah. for breakfast. And uh, um, the waitress was like, you're the guy from the podcast. I was like, oh, holy cow. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. So like all 174 apparently. like I, Actually watch it. Yeah, yeah that's the cool. Uh, uh, well, and so how, so one thing that I would love, and if you're watching this, I'd love, throw some comments down. What do you like that we're sharing? What is it that? Has you watch it? What is it that you'd like to see more of? Um, Me drinking White Claws at 10 a.m. in the morning. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, my Ozarka. Sorry, I'm trying to let my personality blossom. It's <laughs> not real, really working. Uh, so before we get into the meat, so. Yeah. Well, Do we want to tell them what the meat is and then tell them? Well, no, the meat was our, like, the meat of the show is actually, uh, we're going to give you a review today. Yes. Yeah. So Olivia hit me with this. I walked in and I said, I have no idea what we're talking about. I'm having a crap morning. Uh, because I had a crap night, got into some drama. I'll let you guys know about it. And um, so uh, she's like, well, I was kind of hoping that, you know, we would do like a review because Olivia has been consulting with us for six months now. Um, and uh, well, on the payroll or, you know, like, y- yeah, officially. yeah, 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 like officially with yeah. a contract signed with a, with yeah. a job description. And um, I was like, I really like I, I, I can do it. And I, if I say anything that sounds really bad. I'm just having a bad day, yeah, so yeah. don't take it personally. <laughs> yes. Well, and and so the and yes, because this is something the way that we we're, we're being pretty open in these podcasts about kind yeah, of everything. I, I, yeah, I'm basically the just hiding names, not yeah. to offend as many people as possible. Yeah. But other than that, we're giving you kind of the raw truth yeah. as we see it. That's right. Well, and and a lot of times uh, throughout the week, this is the best time, or this is when. Harrison's not running. I'm not running right. So we get to, so I said, you know what? We've officially, you know, six months on August the 1st. I said, so let's, let's talk about what our game plan was for that six months. Cause this is something, if you're coaching with someone, you should be doing something similar to this with your coach. If you are, um, and, and even if you have an employee, are you doing something similar to this? And, so we're going to talk about like what was the goals of the six months? What did we do? What went well? What got pushed? What we're, we're even going to talk about what didn't go well. Yeah, we're going to talk about what didn't go well because yeah. I promise you, like this is the thing. Uh, whether you're a coach, an employee, a boss, you're going to have um, something that you're going to mess up on. That's okay. It's okay as long as you're then coming and uh, I hate the word but, fixing, but well, you're know, repairing uh, so, and you're doing something different. Yeah. I don't think you should be allowed to be a coach if you yourself will not be coachable. Yeah. Because that, like, uh, I, before we get into that, I want everybody to know, like, selling real estate is a practice. Medicine is a practice. Law is a practice. When you're doing something at a high level, it's constantly practicing to master. Yeah. 
And it, there is no form of mastery without failure. Nope. That does not, I mean, can you think of anything in the history of mankind where there was no mastery without failure? Like somebody just woke up and they're the world's greatest and do everything perfect forever. Like that doesn't exist. No. Like I want to be a masterful leader. And yet I can tell you last night, I probably didn't act like one. Yeah. Uh, probably didn't again this morning. Uh, and, and I'm just going to be in my human form today, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I, yeah, you're going to fail no matter who you are or what your title is. That's right. Well, and if you're, and this is the interesting thing. If you're not failing ever, you're a, either not growing, you've got your head buried in the sand. Yep. Or, if things are too good and too easy, you're failing and don't know it yet. That's right. Yeah. Um, so often we fail so slowly, we uh, we're we think we're running and, and, so yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna like I said we're gonna get real. We're gonna talk about what did work, what didn't work, where um, what options, what things that just everything. And so uh, yeah, so before we dive into that, is there anything that you want to say before we go straight in? Yeah, uh, no, not really. I probably shouldn't, but here we go. Uh, just so everybody, uh, you're not gonna know everything. You're not gonna know the players in the game or anything, but. Uh, there's real estate is a very competitive market uh, and it's very uh, it is common practice to recruit from one another's brokerages when you think someone may be a better fit for your company rather than the, the one they're in or whatever. The issue we've been having here lately is that people are using lies and and gossip as a tool to recruit. Yeah, it's very much like I'm not going to tell you what we do well. I'm going to tell you what they know. What, what, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I can't say what I just I almost came out of my mouth. Like it would have been like, yeah. Um, and so I just called it out last night. I just put everybody in a group text, like the, the people who are talking trash, everybody, and just told them how I felt and told them the reason they're no longer inside an organization. And like, just in case, in, in case anybody's unclear about the details here, I'm just going to go ahead and put it into a wall of text and let you deal with it yourself. Mm-hmm. And so I started up a hornet's nest last night and it kind of got back to me this morning again. And I'm just over it. But I just wanted them to know that I knew. Yeah. That's it. Like, yeah. I'm just like, I'm over here working 100 hours a week and investing everything I have into this thing. And people just want to talk trash mm-hmm. because they cannot win. Well, and they're not going to win. Well, and I think, too, it's the, uh, somehow we have to continue to continue to look at, I love the the photo of Michael Phelps. When he, he sweat, that's right. Which was it the mug shot or he's swimming? He's swimming. Okay. And if you'll notice, right, he never looks back at his, at the guy that's in, you know, he, second he said that in a speech. I listened to, he said, I do not look backwards. And so I think that, yeah. that, you know, how can you utilize that for you whenever you hear somebody says something to just go, Hey, they're behind me. I yeah. don't have to look at that. So it, it's, if it was just what they were saying, I wouldn't care. Um, we got, uh, two ethics complaints, um, this week. Uh, from realtors that used to be in the company. Uh, one of them stole from the company and then filed an ethics complaint because we took the money back. Yeah, That is unbelievable to me. Like, it's in black and white. Our contract says it. And and then that happened. The other one... And it's a contract that they signed uh, for how, every year yeah, for it, how many it, it, years? So it wasn't it, it, a surprise. Oh, it's a, yeah. It's a, no, this person signed that contract five times now. Yeah. Um, another... The other person also stole from the company and uh, they uh, they they filed a complaint and it was absolutely unfounded and untrue. It was a lie based on gossip with no evidence, no nothing. And it absolutely amazing to me. Yeah. And it wasn't it was such a ridiculous like it doesn't even it wouldn't even made sense. Yeah. So, so yeah. But that, my biggest issue with it is not what they're saying now. We're doing it. So we're getting real brave. And we're doing it falsely just to hurt my reputation, and it's being coached. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I have a theory on who that puppet master is. And so I just yeah. called everybody out and just said and, – and I think that the thing that hurts the worst is they're no longer just coming after me. They know – if you know anything about me, you come after me all day long. I actually don't care. In fact, I work really, really well with a chip on my shoulder. Mm-hmm. You, want, you want me to whip your ass? Piss me off. And I don't mean physically. I mean in business. Yeah. You want to lose more? Piss me off. You know how to hurt me? Go after the people I love. Mm-hmm. And that's and I think that's just where I I lost it. Yeah. Absolutely lost it. Uh, so somebody said the other day on uh, on Facebook, they said, Harrison, you're the nicest person I know. <laughs> I was like, oh, they're so sweet. Yeah. You can be. Uh, yeah. I think that's, what. what is that, the old roadhouse? 
Uh, be nice to you. Can't be nice anymore. Yeah, be nice. How do I know when I stop being nice? When it's time to not be nice, well, no, you know? When I tell you that it's time, time to not to be not nice. Be nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was uh, Dalton talking Dalton. to the bouncers. Yeah. That's my favorite. Um, so, the old one is so much better than the new one. Oh, yeah, yeah. They Which, just, yeah, but they, they did. They, it wasn't terrible. If we didn't know that it was Roadhouse, I'd have said it was good. Conor McGregor is an awful actor. Well, that was the worst thing well, I've ever yeah. seen in my life. And, and um, he needs to stick to tequila. Well, no, hey, look, our, proper our, twelve whiskey. Or maybe, he sold that day. Yeah, or maybe he right. He had to fail right to get better at it and get better at it. And he needs to go to practice. And he the but the old Roadhouse. So have you seen the new fan theory? Oh no! Oh, I love this. So I love like when people take crazy things. So like he's Dalton Junior. Well, so you know uh, Dirty Dancing. Yes. Okay. So the theory is Patrick Swayze, Dirty Dancing. That's what he was doing, and then he got jaded, and then he started, he got hurt, he couldn't dance anymore, so then somebody asked him, and he went to a bar, and he became, like, Dalton, and now you're seeing the guy from Dirty Dancing, you know, as Dalton, and I thought that was a cool, like, thing. You have to go with That is it. an awful storyline. No, no, no. How so, can you even connect those dots? No, no, so they, they, how, what about uh, Pretty Woman? Okay. Sleepless in Seattle is Pretty Woman Part Two. Not that, Sleepless in Seattle. I'm, I'm sorry. Seattle. No, not Sleepless in Seattle. The one where Julia. Oh gosh, Julia Roberts is ends up dating this or married to this guy who's like horribly abusive, and she has to escape, and then she ends up shooting him at the end. But it, like, I think I have seen this. that one. Yeah, and then my favorite though because he was like creepy abusive, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think I think my sister made me watch that when I was younger. Have what about the Golden Girls? Have you are you familiar with I, I, the Golden Olivia, Girls? Olivia. I'm, I'm 35. Come I'm on 42. It's, it's still a good. Big difference. That means we were raised on different entertainment. I, I know. But I was watching Power Rangers. You were watching <laughs> Golden Girls. Um, I was no. Actually, so let me clarify. I was sneaking Power Rangers. I was sneaking around my parents' back watching Power Rangers. Yes, because yes. I wasn't allowed to watch it. Yes, no, my brother wasn't. I don't know what your parents' reason was, but my brother's was because he like would do all the moves and the- he was violent. And you were the and you were the the punching bag. Uh, no, I I had, uh, he still tells stories about me and uh, beating him up, and he, I was like, I don't remember it that way. My sister definitely beat me up in elementary. <laughs> that happened a lot. <laughs> uh, my sister was mean, bro. So there's this time we were on the school bus and there was this kid and he was actually, I actually became friends with this guy, but he was a big kid. Like he was, he, he was big. He was taller than everybody else. And he was just a massive guy. And he was uh, in two grades ahead, three grades ahead of me, two grades ahead of me. Anyway, but we we're on the same bus route. And one day he was, he was like picking on me. He was bullying me and he had before. So it was nothing unusual, but he had never like put his hands on me. And that day he put his hands on me and I like yelled, stop. And my sister comes up and smokes him in the head with a lunchbox. Yeah. Gashes the side of his head. He starts bleeding. Of course, this dude folds. Like he doesn't like act like a man and like try to fight or anything. He's just look what you did to me. So anyway, so they had to get him off the bus. He went to the hospital. I had to get stitches. His parents called my parents and uh, they had gotten the stories from all sides. And they're like, okay, so we know that he was messing with Harrison. He wouldn't stop. Harrison asked him to stop. Jenny yeah. smoked the kid, and the the his parents went, "We're good." He learned his lesson. Yeah. And he will he can pay for his own hospital bills. He's going to be doing some yard work. Yeah. Well, that's the cool thing about yeah. I, I, I do say this, and I'm not a big fan. I do not like when people say, oh, back when I was a kid, mainly because there were lots of kids my age and older that the reason they were outside all day and only had to drink it on the water hose and all that is because your parents didn't. I don't think parents liked kids very much back then. We like kids and we like to hang out with, you know, most people with their kids uh, nowadays. No, so, my parents just refused to let us be lazy. So yeah. like, you weren't allowed. Like, of course, we got to watch TV during the summer. But, like, if it was a pretty day outside, you're going outside to play. My mom would quite literally go outside, ride bikes, play basketball, go through yeah. the baseball. But, and they had places to go do that and that type of thing. We you had know, a so. really close-knit neighborhood. Yeah. It was, like, three streets. And there were probably 10 or 12 kids. Mm-hmm. And we, I mean, look, we were up until like high school, we got different interests and yeah, yeah, yeah. some people are into sports some people are into Pokemon cards or whatever, you know? And so we, we naturally split, but I mean, we got together 
That's right. Four or five nights a week and rode bikes together. Yes. We raced around people's driveways. Yeah. You know. And my nephews, um, they at their mom's house, they get to do that because she lives on a street with other kids, right? Yeah. And they love to go outside and they do that. At our house, when there's, you know, two kids and you go, now Melvin, their dad, he will take them outside and they'll play like they call it zombie tag and they make up, you know, games. Yeah. But at a certain point, like you're like they're two boys, they're like, okay. You can't ride a bike here. You can't, you know, so they get bored. They come inside. Yeah, you um, could not ride a bike on your road. No, gosh, no. Yeah. I be, I can't. I have a bicycle and I have to put it in the back of my truck will, to drive it down the road. You will die. die. Yes. Yeah, you almost die in a car leaving your house, to yes. be fair, though. I know. I've got to cut some trees back, too, I noticed this morning. So, oh, so this is the Golden Girls. Oh, Lord, here we go. This, I love this. This might be the most controversial thing I ever tweeted, but it's time America faces the truth about a group of beloved historical figures. So here goes. Blanche, Dorothy, Rose, and Sophia, the Golden Girls, were actually members of an organized crime syndicate. <laughs> um, and because uh, it's like, you'll probably think that they were innocent widowers because that's what they want you to think. Nah, these women were gangsters. The Golden Girls debuted in 1985, right at the beginning of the crack cocaine epidemic. They moved there to push the weight the muscle of the organization was provided by Rose, or as we called her, Ruthless Rose Nylon. Rose acted innocent and sweet, but she wasn't as dumb as she pretended. She claimed her husband died, but anyone with two eyes can see she killed her husband for the insurance money. First of all, who moves from St. Olaf, Minnesota to Miami to save money? No one, unless you have a plug for the Colombian nose candy. <laughs> <laughs> so she moves down there and she meets Blanche, the butcher, Devereaux, whose family made their money in the sex trade and dope game. Wait, y'all knew Blanche's daddy was a pimp, right? I mean, he wore a white pimp suit and he did. I had and even talked like a pimp. They said he owned a plantation outside of Atlanta where Blanche grew up. But yeah, we're getting racy. But it sounds like they were selling and growing more than that. Our podcast just became as controversial as the uh, France Olympics. <laughs> He had an unnatural relationship with Blanche that always bothered me, and his name was literally Big Daddy. Big Daddy. Bruh, that's a pimp. But in the mid-80s, Atlanta was getting blacker and blacker, so he sent Blanche down to Miami to move his crops. Where would Blanche meet people rich enough to spend that kind of money? How could she move that kind of weight in and out of the country? Blanche's job? She was an art dealer. That's the perfect cover. First of all, people in Florida ain't buying art like that unless it's velvet. Secondly, it's a known fact that 72% of art dealers belong to the cartel. But they needed someone smart and tough enough to handle the day-to-day -day business, dangerous Dorothy Zormack. She was smart, tough, down on her luck, nothing to lose, and built like an outside linebacker who sometimes played safety in the nickel defense. Dorothy didn't take no she taught the inner city New York schools during the 70s, so she spoke Spanish. Plus, her voice was so deep, the Colombian probably thought Luther Vandross or James Earl Jones was on the phone when she called them. Now, you need to respect a distribution network and connections to let people know not to F with you. And then you have Sophia, she'll kill you, Petrello. Come on, fam, don't tell me y'all can't see this. First of all, she was Sicilian, and she talked mad s***. Plus... Have y'all ever wondered why our nursing home burned down right when everyone moved in? To keep the cops off their trail. It was a cover. Don't forget, Golden Girls debuted one year after Miami Vice. So while Crockett and Tubbs were locking people up, the Golden Girls were quietly running an international drug ring. It's all there if you open your third eye. Final clue. Do you know how much money a person might have to... Um, must have to assure people that if they threw a party and invited everyone they know, they'd still be sure that the biggest gift would be from the... They even know what the card attached would say. But notice they never say what's in the gift. Cocaine. <laughs> but you know their theme song? Cocaine. Other. No, the theme song uh, is... Da -da 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 We're going to insert Golden Girls theme song right Cocaine. there. Cocaine. It's a good um, song. Anyway, so I just, I love I love that. So we got some fan theories today. That uh, was uh, the others were at least founded by like sequels. Um, <laughs> that that's a uh, but it's well they did they then opened a hotel. I've never seen that show. But they then opened a hotel after the Golden Girls went off. But but it was thank you for being a friend, right? So like that. Anyways, I just think it's hilarious, and I'm a big fan of that theory that they were really masquerading as a crime syndicate.
and we just didn't know. They didn't want us to know. So that was cool. So what you believe? That's what I believe. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. <laughs> um, All right. Okay. Are you ready? So we are ready. So I'm going right. to pull up a page because I do want to take notes in this. Okay. Um, okay. So I named it Harry and I, six months down. Harry and I. <laughs> and then the next uh, three to six months plan of action. Heard. Okay. And then I broke it up between the THLT group, the Lily group. I didn't add the insurance group. Yeah, but I don't have feedback from them right now. Well, and so we, she and I were meeting for uh-huh. a while, and then nothing. Mm-hmm. So we need to discuss what, or and she was doing well, so I left it alone. But we need to talk about see what's next steps there, or yeah. if there are any. Um, and then the, um, and then the coaching company. Yeah. Okay. So, um, where would you like to start? Wherever you would like to start. So I have a, I have a list of, uh, like the first six months things that, um, happened. And then I have like a couple things that I think didn't happen. Um, some of it, I think I overshot some of it, um, things adjusted because of the buyer's, um, agreement. Mm -hmm. So we moved to that instead of something else. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but I do think that because you were on the receiving end of this, mm-hmm. I think we have to start there. So, and it, and of course, you're going to, I'm sure we'll have this conversation and other things will come up for you after and we'll just add it. Yes. Um, but so what, what would you say, uh, what would you say went well in the first six months? Mm-hmm. And then we'll go into what are the opportunities? Okay. Um, so the first thing that comes to mind, um, is by partnering with you, um, the first thing you did in the company when you, uh, you spent hours with me consulting, uh, on our, uh, org chart and you identified a gap in our org chart. Then we took someone who was doing a five out of 10 at one job and we moved them into the listing coordinator spot where they are doing a 15 out of 10. Um, that has given me back a ton of time, um, I think we still have some opportunity in that space. And yet I think it's better for our clients. I think it's better for us as listing agents uh, and the, uh, the agents, not even the listing agents, cause she's a listing coordinator, but not even the listing agents love her in her role. She's been doing great. I'm just, I'll brag on her. It's yeah, Jennifer yeah, Gray. It's like 10 out of 10. Love the yeah. girl. Uh, so glad she's in our life now. Um, and she's got such a great personality. Oh, she's great. Yeah. She's great. She's positive. Um, she's very, um, she's just trustworthy. Like, Hey, Jennifer, are we going to do that? Yep. It's done. I don't yep. ask any more questions. Jen said it was done. Um, and so that was a, that was a huge deal. Um, so if I had gotten nothing but that in the course of a year, you probably saved me a lot of money and a lot of time, a lot of heartache and gave me the ability to, I mean, that, that giving me my time back to go grow and do something else is probably the biggest thing that anyone can do for me currently. Um, next thing, um, because we partnered with someone who has influence, uh, in some areas that I didn't, uh, we were allowed a recruitment opportunity. Um, that recruitment opportunity has been a complete blessing to this company. Uh, they have hopped on board. Um, they're being a team player. They're showing up to everything. They are, uh, identifying themselves as a leader in the organization Absolutely. without being asked. Just, yeah. just what do you need? I'm here to serve. Um, man, it, it is such a big deal when people come into an organization, because I've had both of these experiences recently, um, and people come into an organization and they say, well, what's the organization doing for me? That was not the question that was asked Mm-mm. from her. She said, what can I do to help? Yeah. She didn't ask for leads. She didn't ask for any special treatment. Mm-hmm. She didn't ask for anything. She said, what can I do to help? Basically, I'm ready to I'm ready to roll my sleeves up, hop in all the way, and see what I can do to help you guys. Yeah. And that's the kind of people that that's who I want to roll the red carpet out for when I'm like, yeah. man, they believe in us. They believe in what we're doing over here. They've seen and now they want to be a part of. Yeah. And um, that I and this is a personal belief. I don't know if it's true. I haven't asked her, uh, but I don't think we would have had that opportunity uh, had you not been in the company. Uh, and because uh, she's come over and done really well, it has led to multiple other uh, recruitment opportunities um, in, in partnerships. Uh, and so that's been cool. Yeah. In fact, I'd say 
that even bleeds over into Lily Roofing. Her nephew yeah. is in her, is is training with Lily Roofing right now. So like now we're we're working with her family, not just her. Yeah. Um, and she is. Uh, you know, I announced this to the team the other day, so I'm, I'm you know happy to share this publicly. Uh, because of what all Kelsey has achieved and accomplished in the last what she's been with us for four months, maybe. Um, you know, she's already coming. I think she has six or seven pendings right now. Um, you she's know. she's hit her goal every month since we um, since she started. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, she's in lead generation mode. She's in follow up mode. She's doing everything she's supposed to do. She's hosting the open houses. She is a, she's follow. She's tracking her numbers. She's databasing her her contacts. Yeah. Uh, she's doing. She is running the play. Yeah, and 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 I want to give her a huge ad boy because this is the cool part. So uh, when she and I first started working together, we looked at like the pipeline and things like that. Mm-hmm. And some of it, and I'd love to have her own. Um, and matter of fact, she and I are going to do a separate podcast around mm-hmm. ADHD and autism. Yeah. And um, she, uh, so one of the, the uh, uh, one of the things is like you talk about just jumping in. So I had shared with her pipeline and how to do it and keep up with it and things. And um, she started implementing and there's that start, stop, start, stop. And then she really, like, she was getting better and better at it. And I had mentioned it to a lot of agents. I had shared it, but it doesn't connect until you see somebody do it. Right. Like there's a big thing. And so, um, I had her demonstrated in a team meeting and again, it wasn't, it's not her job. She just was like, no, I like, she likes to share what she knows. And, and, um, she did. And one of the top agents of the team said, Hey, and they had they learned from her, implemented, and they're mm-hmm. loving it. So that's that's really cool. So she's bringing in some, yeah, yeah. No, I mean she, she's immediately acting like a leader. Yeah. Um. And so for that reason, uh, we we announced that uh, she is currently training to take over our next listing agent spot. Um. I intend to step out. Uh, no, I'm not stepping out of the company. I'm not stepping out of real estate. So for everybody who was like, yay, yeah, sorry, <laughs> still here. Uh, I, uh, it's another leverage piece. Yeah. Um, it's not, it's providing opportunity for you. It's providing opportunity from within. Cause that's the big thing. If you have a business, like I'm going to be talking at the, I'm doing a, the West Monroe chamber on the third. And part of that, it, it's all going to be about hiring and draining and leverage. And part of that is if you're, if you don't have a big enough company that people can grow in, they got to grow out. That's right. And so sometimes you got to be happy because you don't have, and they're going to grow out. But if you, but you, what's your next opportunity to allow them to grow within your company? Is your world big enough that they can grow within? And so yeah. you've provided an opportunity that she can grow within. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, and I mean, I don't think she was anywhere near like the grow out part, right? Oh, but no, no, but no, just seeing was... like we have a need, and she had she had the capacity to fulfill that. Yeah. Well, and this is the cool part, the capacity to fulfill it. And this is where you have to be in partnership with people that believe in you more than you believe in you sometimes, mm-hmm. because she was really struggling with the idea at first. And I'm not sharing anything that she wouldn't share yeah. with you. I, I'm I'm really cognizant of that, but uh, she has um, a special needs son that it's challenge. And she did, you know, so she, having to figure out how to get these things done and be the mom that she wants to be, mm-hmm. Um, and what, and so as we worked through that for her to be able to go, wait, it doesn't have to be an or, it can be an and. Mm -hmm. And so that's been really incredible as well to see that she's been able to grow and be where she wants to be with her, uh, with her son. Cause that's, I mean, you don't want to like win in this role and completely lose the other. Yeah. Cause one is more important than the other, if we're being honest. Um, and so, but I mean, God bless her for everything that she goes like one of the things we didn't mention as we're talking about how she jumped into a new organization and jumped into a new system and just went all in with us like she's also raising a special needs child at the same time and that is very demanding like we're on the phone sometimes and i hear a kid yelling in the background and she's just trucking along like she doesn't let the stress of that she quite literally is an amazing woman she is she is yeah and um and well and, and so this is the other thing so look you had mentioned to her about the you are you had offered her the opportunity <laughs> And um, this is the other key piece. So Harrison, you had a lot going on because you were about to go out of town and all of this stuff. It would have been so easy for somebody in that moment to go, okay, well, when he gets back, because that's what he said, right? You had said, when we get back, we'll start doing this. Could have been easy for her to rest right there. Instead, she was like, hey, what can I practice on? What She was asking you. She was asking mm-hmm. me. She was asking Amy. While you were gone, not like she uh started nailing all the training videos and practicing it and oh yeah because she's like she's got it about 60 percent down so far yeah and uh and that's in like a couple weeks yeah that's in a couple weeks yeah. yeah 
Um, she was here up until uh, 10 something the other night uh, doing script and role play with me and, mm-hmm. and presenting. Um, and then, uh, cause I told her, uh, I said, Hey, this gets triggered when you fully learn the presentation. And she sent me a text this morning. She goes, I don't think I slept last night. I watched the video a hundred times. I think I got this thing. I was like, Oh, you, you, you took what I said seriously. Yeah. And, uh, that's what you're looking for. Like, I love, yeah. so Diana Kokoska one time, uh, shared this and, and for anybody that's not following Diana Kokoska, she's amazing. But one of the, the things that she said was, um, how you can tell that somebody's right in that role is, they're um they're not just asking for an opportunity mm-hmm. you mention something and they're going out there and doing it and bringing it back to you they're not right so like you yeah, say she something and she go, yeah, yeah yeah that's uh that's the the one time um diana hired this one gentleman and it was funny because she was like uh and they were telling a story and he came with a family member to her house they were just hanging out he's like i didn't know who diana kukoska was mm-hmm. And she had mentioned something, and he was a um, a recruiter or something like that for another company, not in real estate at all. And they had a, um, thank you, they had a, um, they were just talking, and she said something about something, and he was like, oh, I know about that. The next day, he didn't work for her, work with her, didn't even have an idea of getting a job with her. He was happy where he was. He called her in like two days and was like, hey, you mentioned this. This is how, have you thought about it? And he like lays out the plan, and she was like, you need to come yeah, work with me. I want to hire you. Yeah. Right. And he wasn't, he was just like, so that's what you're looking for. And that's yeah. what she showed up as. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and so uh, that's gone well. And, and and again, just to reiterate, I, I don't think I would have had that opportunity available to me um, had you not been there because you were a, 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 a very big recruiting piece. Um, coaching is something that she had missed. And we have that available here, um, you know. And so uh, that was a big deal. Um because she came over um we again we've had other opportunities that i don't think we would have had and so that's uh that's going to be a big deal who you partner with matters and what you're able the value that you're able to offer people that are a value add to what other people cannot offer or will not offer um that's a big deal um let me see what is next on that list uh so the organizational change the recruitment opportunities uh the one-on-one coaching um and this isn't just uh, with the agents, but also with me. Um, guys, it doesn't matter how good you think you are in business. Uh, it doesn't matter how long you've been in it. It doesn't matter what you think your skill level is. Uh, we always have room to grow and be educated and collaborate. Um, and there are, um, I'll tell you, in some of my personal life, I don't have a lot of uh, people locally that I can go to. Um some of this is going to be maybe a, a small mindset issue with me, but we are in a small town and it's a very, com- like, ain't a, there ain't a ton of business to go around. So your collaboration opportunities, uh, especially since we're in multiple businesses, uh, those things shrink. Like other roofers don't want to sit in a room with me and collaborate on marketing plans and mm-hmm. organizational charts and things like that. I certainly can't go to anyone for real estate, right? Mm-hmm. There's a few, there's a few, you know, yeah. Brian, Brian would sit down and collaborate yeah, with yeah. me for a year. You know, um, there, there's others that definitely would. Um, but sometimes you've got to pay for that person. Sometimes you got to pay for that ear, you, got, you know, and uh, well, just like you, a therapist, you know, sometimes yeah. you, you just need someone that has to keep your secret. Yeah. And uh, you got to pay for that sometimes. Well, that's uh, funny enough. I had somebody ask me the other day, said, what, what exactly do you do? And I'm like a therapist. But that's your business. That's exactly <laughs> what I said. I was like, I don't know. Um, but it's and. Yeah, so that's kind of what I look at it as your therapist for the business. Also, though, it's the, your A, number one. Yeah, it has to be with somebody that, like, uh, people share valuable things to me. Like, I've got a company's P&L, and, um, and we just started working together, and I, you know, and I'm like, you have to be working with somebody that you know, like, that's, that's like a, dr- like, there is, I'm a vault. Nothing comes out yeah. without your it'd explicit be, permission. Yeah, it'd be and, like a HIPAA violation in, yeah. in medical terms. That's you know? right. That's right. Well, it, it, it's, it's, it's just not, yeah, like, it's, it's a vault. Yeah. And, but for me to help with the, the next stage of his business, it's just something I need to know so we can do this piece or whatever. And yet, because we want to play red light, green light, right? And yet, but yeah, so you have to, like, that's the vault. So if, you know, Harrison tells me something, a client tells me something, this doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. Um, and um, and you have to have a coach that you can tell because I think sometimes, um, I noticed this when I, not like, you're bought into coaching. Uh-huh. 
you can be very vulnerable, very raw. Uh-huh. I notice that a lot of times it's the people that uh, like a group provides coaching to. Mm-hmm. So often they're like their whole they want to look good and be right. Mm-hmm. So they won't have the conversations that need to be had so that we can come to a solution because yeah. and that's everybody, right? We all want to look good and be right. Um, but to realize like this is a no judgment zone, mm-hmm. like there is, you know, we're just all people. We're all going to screw up. There is completely no judgment around this. Yeah. My job is not to like, you're wrong, Moa. It's okay. What happened? Is that really the goal that you want to do? Are you doing the things that are going to take you there? If not, we've got a mismatch somewhere. Let's find out and we bridge that gap trap. Yeah. I mean, just to, I mean, be very vulnerable with everybody. Um, there was, uh, it was a few years ago. Uh, I was really, really struggling with uh, my alcohol intake. Um, and it was the alcohol was a symptom of what was going on in my life. The alcohol really wasn't the problem, but it was how I was treating the problem. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it was, I mean, seven days a week for a few years. And then some, you know, not some not so great things happened, like my marriage and, and stuff like that. Um, whew, I'm about to get emotional. got to stop. Um, and so I was using alcohol medicinally. Um, and uh, it's just like that morphine button. Like, I mean, I have to feel pain. Here you go. I feel pain. I, I you know. Some people drink. Some people eat. Some people like yeah. areas. Yeah. Yeah. And so my last to be, we had. real estate coach was coaching me through alcoholism. And, and I don't know if it's alcoholism as much as it is like me using alcohol the wrong way. Like he drank too. Like we were on, yeah, we'd yeah. Be on the phone drinking together, you know. Um, and it wasn't like, so nobody looked down on me, but he's like, Harrison, he's like, you can't recover from whatever it is that you're going through, unless you let yourself feel it. And we got to stop, we got to stop medicating now. Mm -hmm. And so that, that led to him legitimately coaching me through a year of sobriety. I mean, I went a year without a drop to drink and it was, I'm obviously drinking again. Yeah. But, well, because there's a difference between alcoholism. Yeah. You can't ever drink again. And you were go, you were utilizing it. There was a, a, a gentleman that the other day I was, uh, I thought he made a valid point. He's actually a, um, uh, he's, written a couple of books, but he talks about like fitness mm-hmm. and I can't think of his name right now, but uh, James something, but uh, he is, he talks about that. He said, you know, a lot of it, you guys are known, you know, you hear me say, you know, more calories in, you know, less calories out, exercise, that type of thing. And he said, but this is the thing is he said, if you have somebody that's miserable in their job, miserable in their relationship, they're miserable somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're going to tell them, like, let's take the one thing away that you enjoy is food. That <laughs> yeah. He's like, after a while, people just can't handle it. Like, so, so you've got to go in and fix the thing that, you know, deal with the relationship, deal with the job, deal with the pain that you're adding. Then you can go on to your weight loss journey or, or whatever else yeah. it is. But you have yeah. to, yeah. Yeah. And so we just, I mean, uh, you know, just a testament to what coaching is. Like, sometimes it's about your P&L. Sometimes it's about your relationships. Uh, sometimes it's about your habits and, and that was just something that he and I had to walk through. I mean, we, we shed tears together. We laughed together. We cried together, uh, but we won together. Yeah. And, and that's most importantly. So if my old coach is watching this, well, thank you. Give him a shout out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, oh, oh, like, oh. Yeah. You can mention his name. Oh, I actually forgot his name. Right. <laughs> I have short We're not good with names. Yeah, it's I'm not, really not. It does not reflect. I can see his face. Yeah. Oh, Jason Critchfield. Yeah. Yeah. He was my Tom Ferry coach, which I'm not, uh, no longer with the Tom Ferry organization, but um, uh, he did a great job. Yeah, he's yeah. a good coach. Uh, he actually ran a very similar model to what we do. Um, I think the the one difference uh, that he says, because they have been their price point is so high, uh, like dear yeah. Lord, uh, but is uh, the I, he's always been amazed with our ability in the ISA uh, yeah, department, nice. yeah. which nationally – I mean, everybody I've ever talked to is like, y'all do how many transactions? Like, yeah. 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 So um, and for anybody's, I say in other organizations, you might say telemarketers. I say we call inside sales, outside sales. Um, so you'll hear people say ISA or OSA. All It's just telemarketer. Um, yeah, call uh, center. Call center. Uh, but it is. And then you have inside sales or outside sales. But for the most part, they're interchangeable. So don't worry about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that... Um, you know, we were talking about the effectiveness of coaching, but yeah. So, um, you know, just you coaching me and us going through some discovery uh, and making some decisions uh, over the past, uh, you know, six months has been very helpful. Uh, I know that a lot of the other agents on the one-on-one have really enjoyed that as well. Um, it it does um, something that really bothers me about people who want 
to be successful but do not want to be coachable, I find that those people most of the time are not or will not be. Well, and sometimes they, I think it depends on, sometimes it's the definition of success because sometimes there are absolutely high uh, production agents mm-hmm. that, um, because we all tend to, like whatever we're good at, we tend to get good there and then get we get comfortable. Well, well, we get comfortable and we also go, well, I'm good at it. So this must be the best way to do it. Instead of going, okay, I'm good at this. Is there an opportunity to be able to do the same thing in a shorter amount of time? Is there an opportunity to take this and parlay it into something else? That type of thing. Yeah. Um, and usually where I see like now the same flip side of that is somebody that's, uh, they may think they're amazing. Yeah. And there may be, like, they're not terrible, but they're maybe mm, mediocre. Yeah. Those are usually the ones that, in their mind, they're amazing, and so they don't yeah. grow. But the people who are the best will go, ah, I'm not very good at that. Yeah. They're very humble about it. Um, yeah. You know? Because I think part of it is we're always like, it doesn't matter. And I don't know if this is a, uh, this is probably a flaw, but, uh, or, you know, like, it's funny how, like, even... Um, I would say you, everybody that I know that's like a top producer, they spend half of their time going, oh, did I screw that up? Yeah. Or did I, no, 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 that's okay. Could, could I have yeah. done that better? Yeah, you, you know, know um, and I, so I think that's the, I think that's the, yeah. you know, part of it as well. Yeah, good is the enemy of? Great. That's right. So, um, but yeah, so the one-on-one coaching thing has, has been going well. I really do wish that I could convince everybody that one-on-one coaching is for them. Mm-hmm. Like I believe it is my personal belief that if you want to be in sales, you should have a coach. You you need a team and you need a coach. And I'm not telling you to go join a real estate team. Like that's not, I can already hear the haters. That's now. right. Like, yeah. Oh, you just want to say, no, like, I'm, I'm not saying you have to have like you a real estate a team. team. Yeah. You create a team. A team. You could create start, a, start a mentorship a mentor, group, yeah, yeah. start a, ma- a monthly mastermind so that you're reviewing systems, editing your process. Yeah. Um, Don't be in the foxhole alone. Yeah. 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 No, absolutely not. No, yeah. your foxhole is your group of people who won't stab you in the back who you want to have your back. That's right. And it, it's important that everyone is doing that. And sales is just so much more than just a sales game there's mindset there's rejection handling there's objection handling there's strategy there's customer service there's running the play there's so many things around it and if you're doing it alone i promise you you're missing half of it yeah you will it you're just making life harder um communication to like sales communication leadership it's all there um okay so um Okay, so anything else that comes to mind before I go through my list of things and get your uh, – because we're st- right now we're doing the wet well, and yeah. then we're going to hit the opportunities. Okay. Um, do you have anything else? So those are those are my highlights okay. for you over the last six months. Those are your, your impact plays, I suppose. Okay. So I've got uh, – that's interesting because we had some of the same things. Okay. Now, of course, I had an opportunity to like yeah, spend to time to think yeah. about this. Um, uh, so, um, buyer agency agreements, we do have that in place. That's mm-hmm. part of the flub. So, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But yeah. that we do have that in place. Um, now, the um, the agents, um, the rising standard agents, are making more contacts than they've made in the past. Uh, they there's some opportunity there. We talked a little about that this morning. Mm-hmm. Um, um, leadership meetings. Mm-hmm. We were doing those leadership meetings. I do think that, and then of course with oh the yeah, nighttime meetings. And we, I'm I'm gonna tell you that's probably that's part. Well, so partially that was there was a conflict there, and me and you talked about that. We put those on. Yeah. A lot of it is is I like my nights are already like yeah booked. Well, and but we were only doing nights because you were so packed, right? Yeah. But I do think those uh, need to come back in because. It, whether it's quarterly, but that to keep everybody on the same page. Yeah. Um, keep dreaming. And then, um, and then I put the one on ones, which there are some things that I want to change about what we're doing there. But that's a side note. The, uh, we do have an open house action plan written now with scripts so that whenever a new agent comes in, I went through it with uh, while you were gone. Um, but that way, whenever a new agent comes in, they know how you guys do open houses, they know how to win, they know all those pieces. Um, 
I did not teach this, but there was a, um, we had somebody come in and teach how to do a specific training. And now that is recorded and it's in a sp- certain spot. So as new agents come in or, you know, or not, not when I say new agents, new agents, your organization, they now know how to do, run that yeah. play. Um, monthly newsletters are now going out to the database. Oh, see, I did. I did not think about your impact on the database and what you've done for us there. Um, that's one of our biggest blind spots actually in the company. Um, that is probably the thing that we have most neglected in the last eight years. Mm-hmm. We're great at prospecting. Um, we're great at ads. We're great at internet lead follow up. We're great at appointment setting. We're great at listings. We're great at conversion. We're great at all those things. Our database has been a big old massive F for mm-hmm. fail. Um, and so you have definitely helped us do that. Um, that, and then we've invested a little bit of money in uh, some programs that have helped yeah um and so uh yeah we're and we're starting to get leads off our database yes that was a so i mean you think about this like just we did 482 units last year we lost two of our biggest producers as well as a mediocre or less producer um so over 100 transactions walked out the door the only agents we replaced them with up until recently were brand new agents, which statistically speaking, three to six months before they even start selling anything whatsoever. And that's about how long we've had these guys. We are on pace for a 450 to 500 year in a massively down year. I was, I was reviewing the uh, agent production yesterday with Amanda, me and her uh, at four o'clock, me and her went to Don Chewy's. We did just some review of numbers and uh, just talking business. And uh, we looked at everything and big names, People who have been in the business for five, six, seven, eight, 10, 20 years sit at the very, very bottom of the board. Mm-hmm. Some new names popping up at the top, but the top names ain't selling a whole lot either. And so you know production overall is absolutely down, and then board enrollment did not go down. Um, people are still getting their real estate license because, you know, these recruiters talk about how easy this money is. And uh, so the the wealth is being shared on a, on a larger scale than it has been in the past. And you look at those things and you go, we'd lost over a hundred, what should have been a hundred transactions. So theoretically we should be about a 360 to 380 company. We're going to hit 450 to 500 mm-hmm. this year if we don't take our eye off the ball. Mm-hmm. And so you're like, okay, well, how did you make up that difference? My opinion, database was probably it. Very cool. Do you have any argument there? Um, I would love to say that database at this point has, well, no, I could, I could, I'm Okay. Because six at this point, mm-hmm. it's had some difference, but we're going to start seeing the big thing. So oh, I would well, say, I mean, we'll like, see that. I would say that yeah. through, through consistency, we're certainly going to see yeah. more conversion year over year. But I mean, we've set four or five appointments out of our database yeah. in the last you know, two months. Yeah. Well, and, know, and, uh, and that didn't happen previously. Yeah. Well, and the know. new agents that have come over, mm-hmm. like because that's um, um, that did not have a database. Like they sent like the first email that we sent out to Kelsey's group. They were like they mm-hmm. called her. Yeah. Hey, we got this. That you know, so it created conversations. Rick had people that were um uh that set, you know, appointments from those emails and then for me going, okay, not only did you email them, have you called them? Okay, yeah. now have you called them? Yeah, to make sure because um, if they didn't respond to the email, we need to call and go, Hey, I just dropped that in your inbox. I want to make sure you got it. Yeah. Make sure I had the right email. How are you whatever. doing? Can I, you know, be of assistance, that type of thing. So um, so that's huge. And then um um I had put, which you mentioned this, like you made another step out of the day to day with, mm-hmm. you know, so that we can, and then, um, YouTube, uh, growth from 14 to 175 people. Yeah. And that's, I mean, really, you know, that's, that's small yeah. number, but like, so prospectively, and Tom Ferry talks about this. He did a really good job of opening my eyes to what digital content can do for your business. Um, so just to be clear, I'm not doing this because I want to be a YouTube star. Like that is. What? And Come on now. I don't I don't like public speaking. I actually don't like people most of the time. Um I love you guys. I just don't like you. Um yeah. and uh you know, we're doing this because we want to be the authority. We want people to know that we know what we're talking about. We want, I, and ultimately I want you guys to know that I'm a real person with real feelings and like, you know, I somebody uh I went on a date one time. And when we left the date, so I actually, I didn't enjoy the date at all. Like I exited stage left as soon as possible. Um, but um, 
she wanted to talk to me about real estate and she's like, well, I'm going to get my license. And I just like looked at her and I, this is such a jerk statement, but I said it, I said, great. So I we get to talk, we get to talk to you. I get to talk to you about how we're going to go out on a date or you're going to be my competitor. Yeah. Like, cause there is no both. Right. You know, and, uh, and I don't want somebody that I'm romantically involved with inside the company. I just don't mm-hmm. like this is a personal, you know, whatever. And, um, so, that date went really awful, and I just paid out as quickly as I could and left. Um, I'd never, I don't, I still haven't spoken to her to this day. It's been like two years. <laughs> and, uh, so we know if you go on a date with a Harrison, let's not talk real estate. Yeah, I see her on football games, like at West Virginia. I'm like, oh no, she won't even look at me. I feel so bad. I'm sure she's a nice girl. She just wasn't for me. Yeah. Uh, she's beautiful. That's good for her. Right. Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, but no, she, so she was in some, text group with a bunch of other girls shocker these girls know who i am and uh so she says like oh harrison thinks he's a god or something like that (laughs) and what else did you do that (laughs) nothing i just left um so i think that was her way of like just like hey it didn't go well so i'm gonna say something bad about him um rather than just it didn't work yeah it just didn't work out like i'm not mad at her yeah you know it just wasn't for me right and um so the other reason that I do this is so that I don't want people to think I'm somebody like that. I think that I'm somebody, something I'm not like I am just a human out in this world trying just like you are. And I get some things right. I get a lot of things wrong. And then we just dust ourselves off and we go at it again. That's, I love the Maya Angelou quote that says, um, when you know better, do better. Yeah. And that's that's all we're, everybody's trying to do. When we know better, we do better. Oh, yeah. yeah. And sometimes you don't know until you do. And then you go. Ah, that's another opportunity yeah, like yeah, my yeah. text messages last night yes Ooh. yeah which and in all fairness to you you did say you were going to do that now look i'm and also a man of my word I, you know i don't know maybe we should have a different conversation right there um you probably should be like harrison yeah, yeah. i need Get you to promise phone. me you're not going to <laughs> yeah because somebody else was like you can't do that. And I was like, <laughs> watch me. Yeah, that may have been why I didn't. I, I, there was, I guess I don't care about the repercussions yeah. of that. Like I've always, so I, I, I strongly do think about repercussions or backlash um, before I do things. Um, my parents beating me made like, that's one thing that like when your parents discipline you um, like parents do not today, like I got beat. My parents quite. This is how much my parents beat me. Okay. See, I only. I think I've gotten one whipping on purpose in my entire life, and one whipping on accident. They were trying to whip somebody else and got me, and I was too scared of her to. Say Even if that would have happened, my mom would be like, "You probably deserved it." The, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. No, like they, I, I literally told. Uh, it was she was trying to whip her daughter, and my aunt used to drive with a switch on her dashboard, and so she grabbed that switch and she's her. <laughs> wrong but, person wrong person and i was so scared i just sat there and took it and didn't even cry out loud i was just i was uh i think i was in my 30s before i told aunt lynn or oh, at least I think late she was 20s when this happened i'm like oh, oh aunt lynn, somebody hits me with a switch right now yeah no oh, aunt, lynn, <laughs> aunt lynn would have whooped me in my 30s oh god uh, but it, and we ended up being great. like she was she's since passed away but she was like my favorite person as an adult um but yeah she i, I didn't tell her for 20 something years that like yeah and then that became a joke but i was like that's why jesse's so spoiled which she's not i was like that's why your daughter's so spoiled is because i took her whipping for her yeah Yeah, right (laughs) um but no my my parents beat the living mess out of us now it was in love and i think it was biblically the right way right i mean the bible says that if you i mean if you spare the rod you spoil your child that you know you clearly you disagree well so it's it's in theory Not so much the challenge that I have with is um, a lot of parents, Mm -hmm. and this isn't necessarily about your parents, but a lot of parents um, that I'm familiar with, when they they only whip or they only, and I'm like, there's about 50 tools in your toolbox. Yeah. Um, If you only whip, then you are creating um, a child that's going to lie to you. You're creating a child that's going to hide stuff from you. You're creating. Ah, see, I don't know. And I think it's maybe it's because my parents did do it biblically the right right way. Now, now, I have a friend of mine. There was a process to getting spanked at our house. Like there was like you knew A, B and C had to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's so that's where I say like in theory, because I'm like, yeah. So in theory, if 
you're doing things a certain way. But again, I think that's like a last resort, if at all, because... Hey, there was no or in our house. There was an and. Yeah. Like you said, you can't only be whipped. Like, my parents did not just whip us. Yeah, yeah. You know, we got grounded for well, six no, weeks right yeah, afterwards. Yeah. Well, I mean. What I mean by and is, so like, yeah. let's say that a, a kid comes up and they are... And this is what I mean by different tools in your tool belt. So like, um, uh, when, uh, when my nephews, they came up and they were... Um, uh, Let's say that Fox and Levi, they're seven and nine, and they came up and like Fox was, he said something disrespectful. Mm -hmm. And I just looked at him and I said, you want to try that again? And he was like, like he immediately knew what he did wrong and he didn't do it. And so that's it. Yeah. Now, and then we have a thing at my house when they're over there is like, and it's so funny and this works so well. So according to their age, they have boxes and they have free spaces because like, hey, I did something I told you not to, I mark it. And then it, then they start losing privileges and things like that. And um, even my nephew, Ethan, who got kicked out of like four schools and all that when he lived with me, we were introduced to this concept. And he only made it through all the way through once uh, because there's something about like, so like on Sunday, we have a conversation about what rule are we working on? What does it mean? All that type of thing. And mm-hmm. then these are the, and they helped me make, this is the fun part. They helped me make not just the rules, but the consequences. Uh. So Levi was, or, um, uh, 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 Fox likes to like aggravate Levi. Fox is the younger one. And Fox got to say, well, you know, I don't want Levi to do X, Y, Z. Okay. And then we have, and it's basic stuff. Like, cause two boys, right? Yeah. Like we don't hit an anger. We, you know, yeah. and so they can, and then I teach them like, look, you can choose to hit him, but you get a mark. Yeah. Like that's life, right? A mark. Well, no, because depending on then you lose. Olivia, stuff. not the mark. No, well, no, that's so funny. <laughs> so Fox is throwing a fit uh, because of some video game on Thursday. <clears throat> okay. And I'm about to get on a work call, and and I'm you know my mom's sick and all this, and Fox is throwing a fit, and so um, I have a rule that if I ask you to come downstairs, I don't have to ask twice. Mm-hmm. If I say come downstairs, you come down. If you don't, that's a mark. And Funny enough, like they don't want Mark. And so like they, cause their dad will say, I'll whip you. Well, he says it more than he whips them. So they don't, they ignore it. Yeah. But for me, they know they're going to get a Mark. And so. Because uh, there's no effort to that. It's just. Well, but it's. You don't have to go through a crying kid. You don't have to tr- chase them around. Right. Right? And, yeah. they, and they know, right? So like, so they're very, and it's. At which, whole, how many Marks does one have to get to achieve an ass whooping? I, I don't know. I've never had to go that many marks. I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> ah. So he, that's the cool. We're part. gonna find out how well the system works in the next 15 years well, as we watch Fox and Levi, Levi yeah. go well, into their teenage at, years. Well, you look at Ethan, right? Like yeah. he's 20 now, and he's he's doing better than yeah. he did. That's for sure. And so, um, but it was the but anyway. So like so, Fo- Fox is and we have it because Fox has a problem right now with throwing temper tantrums. Mm-hmm. Before I, st- you know, before I re and put this in, is he would throw a temper tantrum, and then so I'm having to go upstairs, pull him out from underneath the bed, you know, the whole bit, and I'm like, I'm not doing that, and you're not doing that, mm-hmm. so let's figure out something else. And I said, okay, so, uh, um, you know, it's a mark, and um, now again, like, there's a certain number of marks, so and then you start losing things, right? Yeah. So, uh, so anyways, I said. Uh, cause we hadn't had the conversation every week, every like we had that conversation on Monday so they could, they, they know where they are and the thing starts over. And so I said, Hey, cause normally I don't worry about a mark. It's mm-hmm. just a mark. Um, so, but I said, Hey, you know, you, you didn't do what I said the first time. Yeah. And Levi pops up says, so he gets a mark. <laughs> so Fox came downstairs as I asked. And he was still saying, that's not fair. That's not fair. I said, look, I've got a work call. I've got to be on. Uh-huh. We can discuss it. But I need you to go in the bedroom and lay down. Because uh-huh. I knew he was just overtired. I need you to go in the bedroom. Like, you don't have to go to sleep. You got to go in the bedroom, lay down, be quiet. When I finish, we'll talk. Because he didn't want to get a mark. Yeah. He did that. 30 minutes later, 45 minutes later, I get off my call. Guess what? He didn't forget all about that. He's happy go lucky. We get to have the conversation. And then we made the switch and everything was good. Um, so I think it's, it's, we have to, and again, I'm not saying like, oh, don't ever whip or whatever. What I am saying is, are you using these things to teach kids how to deal with their emotions? Mm -hmm. And, um, um, because in real life, we're all going to get upset. We got to figure out how to deal with those emotions and not everybody, but some adults 
they had a bad day at work, you did something, I'm tired of it, and I whipped you. Well, yeah. that I, that's what I'm not okay with. Yeah. 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 So my my parents' uh, um, methodology was obviously a little different, um, but it was if my dad said he was going to whip you, he was going. Yeah, it was yeah. not an empty threat. No, well, and that, uh, <laughs> that is the other thing I, I tell people that make the empty threats. I'm like, if you tell a kid you're going to do something, you just got to do it. You got to do it, or you got to correct it. Because yeah, like, that yeah. one, that one, two, one, I, on three, I'm going to spank you. One, no, yeah, fifty five hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Like yeah, no. waiting. Like no, no. So my mom said Harrison, and she just looked at me, and I was like, That's right. That's like, right. Because I knew. If I made it to one, I was f***ed. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Yeah, yeah. But there was a whole process to it. So That's my, right. Yeah, my, yeah. Parents, my parents did this in love. So you got you got your, they said, if you do this, you're going to do this. Boom. Done. It was clear. It, it was a promise. So clear expectation. Um, you know, I'm a big expectations person. Yeah. Um, the next step is after they spanked me, that, I mean, they would seriously, they would sit on the bed with me and go, hey, we're going to pray. Mm-hmm. And so they would they would pray almost like bringing me back to like childhood here. Um, I can just see myself on the little single bed with my with my Woody and Buzz comforter, you know. Um, and, Wait a uh, minute, are, I love Toy Stories, but you were literally young enough that you had that as a bedspread. Surely not. Nah, it's probably Michael and Jake. I was probably getting whipped in their room or something. Oh, okay, I'm, okay. Having, I'm having flashbacks though. I have I had uh, I had Chicago Bulls stuff. Okay, uh, the Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. Yeah. I was a Scotty guy, you know. Uh, Both. Great. Yeah. Hindsight 2020. Scotty's kind of a titty baby. Kind of team Mike now. Um, but uh, so they would sit down and pray with us because they would go over like, hey, we don't enjoy doing this. Like the Bible says we do this, yeah. you know. And then uh, afterwards, so they would leave the room for a little bit and they would come back and they would have a conversation about, hey, like now that everything's calm. Yes. Do you understand why that happened? And there were a lot of times where my parents would, would absolutely just cry. Yeah. And especially me because so – this is a testament to how much my parents beat me, okay? Uh, my teachers would call. Now, I had straight A's in high school. I, I graduated uh, second in my class with 360 people. Uh, I had made two or three B's my whole life, except for conduct. Um, so straight A's, but C in conduct. And it was all my mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, wasn't, I can't imagine that. I know. Um, but my, uh, the principal called, and um, she said, look, I, I just got to know, is he being disrespectful? I said, well, he's talking when we're asking him not to, but is he being disrespectful to the adults or yeah, yeah, yeah. is he being rude to people? Like, oh, no, he just talks too much. He's just, he's laughing. He's joking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's trying to have fun. I'm like, okay, is he hurting anybody? Nah, he's not hurting anybody. He's a disturbance, but, you know, and, and my mom said, I whip my child every single day. I can't beat him anymore. Yeah. Please quit calling me. <laughs> that was it. And, and that's just said, if, unless he's being disrespectful or hurting yeah. other kids, Please quit calling yeah. me because we can't beat our kid anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, it was, I'm serious. Go That's call Pam. That's, yeah, go call yeah. Pam. She literally, I mean, one, okay, she so handed Pam, me the belt one day. If you're watching this, yeah. I want you to put in the comments because is, is this one misremembering something? Oh, no. There was one time where my mom was spanking me and she got started crying, broke down, handed me the belt. And she goes, will you please spank me? Because obviously I've done something wrong mm-hmm. to raise you this way. Yeah. And like, so, yeah. 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 Like that's uh, tough. That's yeah. t- that's a tough memory. Well, not only this, so this is the other thing. Like growing up, I never understood that statement. Now I do think some parents say this, and it's like uh, whatever. No, but it's they, real. When they say like this hurts me more than it hurts you, like it hurt even the freaking mark to my nephew. I'm like, I don't want to give you because like we do want the best for the kid. Yeah, we don't want like it's so funny. And um, but yeah, that's to me. It's just like one, and you go back to Ethan because. Like, I have family members that were like, if you would just beat him. I'm like, first off, he has, he's not the typical child that has been raised with the same people. Like, yeah. if they're, everybody has different things. And so, um, I said, you know, because at one point I was like, look, if, if beating him would work, I would beat him. You know, but it that wasn't what. And quite frankly, he may beat you. So. That's, <laughs> um, we were, uh, I got my bluff in on him when he was a little bit younger because uh, we tussled one time. And I put him on the floor a couple of times. Uh, thankfully, he was still young enough because he, he was bigger than me. But he was a big kid though. Oh, yeah. He, he was bigger than me at this point and stronger mm-hmm. than me. But he didn't, he still had enough of so that I'm scared. a kid yeah. like thing. So I was very lucky, and I immediately called my older brother Avery. I was like, "Hey, can you come over?" <laughs> yeah. Um, but we did a uh, 
but so every kid I do think is different and, and, and not even the kid, but like you have to take in background and things into these things. But that's what, um, so like whenever he had a challenge about something, we, if it was like, if it's kind of like with coaching, maybe that's where some of this came from. But like whenever he was, well, I was coaching at that time, but like whenever he would do something and we weren't getting the result that we wanted, mm-hmm. I said, all right, what are we doing? What's what working? What's not working? What do I not know? So I became like the researcher of, I'm talking to Before taking action, you went into massive like, discovery. Discovery. Yeah. And um, uh, so that we could figure out, because I know growing up, like my little brother, uh-huh. you could have beat him until your arm fell off. He was just, it didn't bother him. A, because, a cat or a cockroach, one of the two. Well, it, it just, it was over and he was done. If you put that boy in the corner, if you would have told him, don't eat or I'm going to put you in the corner or don't breathe, he would have not breathe. He did. He hated to be still. Now, me, on the other hand, they never had to whip me very much. Or, like I said, I can only remember once and another. It's because it hurt my feelings that you had. So, you know what I mean? Like, so it, well, was, it just hurt my yeah, butt. <laughs> right. So, like, you figure out for which kid needs what. And, yeah. uh, but it's, it's a, uh, but anyways, we got on a whole well, tangent. Well, there. So I, but I do want to finish this thought real okay. quick um, because it, it all circles back around okay. to this. But, you, you know, the Mark Lowry, he's a Christian comedian because, you know, we weren't allowed to listen to secular ones when I was growing up. Oh, yeah. No. Um, and so Mark I Lowry. Say but. I, I couldn't but say but. was a cuss word. Oh, yeah. If you said but in my house, you got beat. Yeah. It was bottom. It was. No, like, no, no, no. Because that was synonymous even, with but. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You couldn't even say like. You could not reference the buttocks. Yeah. 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 Not like BT, nothing. <laughs> yeah. Like, used to, yeah. No, no. Yeah. So, um, Mark Lowry, you know, he's like, your parents ever whip you and go, this hurts me more than it hurts you. And Mark would go, if that's the case, then let's switch places. Yeah. You know, so I but actually. As an adult, it really does. Not, hurt your, so, like, it hurts your soul I, when I you love a, your kids. I have a real life example. So, you know, some of the people on the podcast know, some don't. Uh, but I've been reintroduced to a kid in my life in the, over the last uh, three or four months that I haven't got to see. I raised him for three years and then haven't seen him for five. I'm back in his life today. And, uh. He has not had a, a, a lot of um, contact with men in his life, especially men who believe in authority. Um, and so... Uh, I feel like I need to teach you the system. <laughs> you love the system. Your system? It's not my uh, system, by the way. No, no. Somebody uh, else... It was introduced to me by counselor. It's awesome. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't um, create it. So... Smart discipline. We... Uh, he... Me, I can't remember exactly what happened, but basically he... Um, he was being really, really rough. I asked him to stop, and uh, he wouldn't. He was being rough on the kids. He's being super rough with me. And then at one point, I said, "Stop!" Like he took like three man swings at me, and so I, I disciplined him. And but it was very lightly, like because yeah. again, I'm just reintroducing his life. Like I don't want to overstep, and I certainly don't want to take a place that I'm not supposed to take. And um, so uh, he, I said, "All right," and I set him down, and I just had his hands, and I said, "Hey, man," I was like. We can't do that. We don't do that to people. We certainly do not do that to adults. And uh, I said, I'm going to let go of your hands now, and, and we're going to talk. And he puts his hand, he shakes his fist in my face, and I just, my inner Pam was channeled. Mom, you did this to me. Mm-hmm. I grabbed his hands, turned them over, and I spanked him. And he just looked at me, and he just terrified. I don't think it's ever happened to him in his entire life. And he just went, and then I, I got emotional. I started crying immediately. I, f- I flipped out. Yeah. I absolutely flipped out. I, I I held it back for a second. And I said, I love you. I'm sorry, but you're not going to act like that. And mm-hmm. I, I held it back until I could get out. And I walk outside and I am just literally I'm pacing the garage. Like I can't think. I, I mean, it destroyed me. Yeah. And so I went back inside and I just went to the, one of the adults and I said, hey, it, it's time for me to go. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and go home because I needed to go process this. Yeah, yeah. So I called his mom and I said, hey, I just want you to know what happened. And um I said, I'm sorry if I overstepped. And she was like, no, he needed that. And I was like, well, I'm glad that you feel that way. But I did not like it hurt. It hurt me mm-hmm. to do that to him now. And it took about three days for him to talk to me again. Mm-hmm. And uh, so because his mom went and had a conversation and said, hey, like I heard what happened with Harrison today. Like, why don't we talk about it? And, you know, he told her the same thing I did. And um, and so she said, you know, you can't treat people like that. You know, there's consequences to your actions. That's then. right. And that's where we're looping around to this whole thing. But, uh, is, you know, she explained that to him. And then the next time I saw him, I went and just gave him a big hug and I said, I love you mm-hmm. and we're going to act right. Yeah. And he said, I love you too. And then we were good. Yeah. And now we have like, we have a bond now. Um, like he face, he's out of town right now. Uh, his grandma's, um, and about to go to church camp. 
Uh, but you know, he FaceTimed me the other day just to just to talk to me. You know, and he's nobody's making him call me. Yeah. You know, he wanted to he wanted to show me his new Pokemon cards and tell me about what he had been doing at the beach yeah. and and all that. And and so that was really cool. Um, and so you're not going to lose your bond if you discipline your child. Well, well, so and I'm going to throw this because this is not- correctly. You discipline them correctly. Well, not only that, but so this is the whole care and candor conversation. So I've had this with, so I, I have six brothers and and everybody different, but I was like, so this is the thing, and this goes into coaching too. You have to have care and candor. Uh-huh. So let's say you had no relationship with him. Uh-huh. You saw this kid over there doing something and you whipped him. Well, you have no care. Uh-huh. You can't give candor. You can't give discipline of any sort because guess what? You don't have the care or the trust built to do that. Correct. So, like, you might be doing something. Um, uh, so, if I haven't built care with you, I'm not gonna. You, I'm not gonna go to candor first, right? You have to have care and candor. You have to have. So, you you are engaged in doing a lot of things with him, mm-hmm. and so you are able to do some candor, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you have to have care. It's almost like you make an emotional deposit in the banking account, and mm-hmm. then you can then make withdrawal. But if you make withdrawals, that's kids not. those are the kids that don't talk to their parents when they're grown yeah. because you have to have care and candor. And I think sometimes um, dads only think... Now, by the way, not all dads, and I think this has changed a lot, but... Sometimes dad thinks their only job is to discipline. And yeah. I'm like, no, you got to go, go do things with them. You got to pour into them. And then yes, discipline as yeah. well. I do believe in discipline, but it's that you got to have care and candor yeah. or you, are you break? There is no bond. Yeah. My biggest memories of my dad are not the ones of him beating my ass there. I'll tell you, man, this is, this actually does make me emotional. Cause I, if you, if you hear me talk about my dad, you'll, you'll hear reverence come out of my mouth. Um, but uh, it's it's not the beatings. It's that every time I looked up and I was at a football game or a baseball game or fo- basketball, whatever it was, if I looked in the stand, my dad was there. Yeah. Practice, my dad was there. My dad took off work to make sure that we got to practice early, that we left late because practice wasn't over when everybody else's practice was over. We sat around and made extra shots because we were going to be excellent, yeah. you know. And uh, my dad was present. Yes. That's what I remember. And so you talk about making deposits more so than you make withdrawals. I, I mean, I remember even after, you know, my dad would spank me and all that, you know, um, you know, I, especially when I was a child, like when I saw him sitting in his chair, like I wanted to go sit in the chair with him. Yeah. You know, I wanted to go watch TV with yeah. my dad. I'd sit there and watch preachers preach. Cause that's what my dad watched. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, and uh, you know, I do, I'll tell you this. I remember the one time my dad took it too far and he came into my room crying and he said, son, I'm asking for forgiveness. He said, I took it too far. He said, I lost my temper. He said, you made me mad. And uh, I never should have done that. Yeah. And, and then I was like, so you got to replace this $300 headphones you just broke? Yeah. <laughs> well, but to me, yeah. so that, that right there, that's the other thing. I think so often we think, oh, they're a, they're a child and we can't. No, no, no. You are modeling how you want them to become. And so if you do something, apologize. Now, I don't mean walk around, oh, sorry, all the time. And yet, like, so my nephew, so I'm real big about, like, so when I have any uh, kids or my nephews, like my nephew said one time, uh, they did something and they got in trouble for it. And they're like, but don't tell my dad. I said, hold on. So real quick, I said, we don't keep secrets. Yeah. Um, I said, now, will you get in trouble twice? Not unless your dad has already said, hey, if you do that again, because I'm going to let your dad know that I've already dealt with it, yeah. but we don't keep secrets. Yeah. Well, the other, so, but I also don't do the whole, when your dad gets here. Yeah. Well, one day they were doing something and I was, and they, but because they, and they were just, so kids, all kids go through different, like little things. And they were going through this, this thing where every, like they just weren't listening and all that. And um, this was before I reintroduced the system back in. And um, uh, and I said, like, I got tired of telling them whatever. And I said, I'm going to tell your daddy when you get home. And I was like, oh. And I was like, you know what? No. And, and no, like 10 minutes later, I was like, you know what? I said that. Let me, let me clear that up. Your dad's going to know. But you're going to do this because I said yeah. So we're going to handle this right now. Yeah. Because I, you know, it's, uh, but yeah, we don't do secrets. Yeah. Uh, everybody knows everything. Um, my, my favorite is, uh, this, well, we won't go into there. I've got so many cool stories about them, but, uh, but anyway, so yeah, we don't keep secrets. We might keep a surprise. Like yeah. if we're going to surprise, a, a um, 
which they don't keep good surprises. We'll buy their mom or dad something and then they tell them. But, um, but yeah, we don't keep secrets. And yeah. so, uh, but that, so those are just some of those conversations, but I do the expectations and then having expectations with the kids, uh, expectations with how you want to do. And then care and candor, you yeah. have to have that because the reason why you have such a great relationship with your dad. Yeah. Is it because of the discipline that may have helped you become who you are? But your great relationship is because of both. Yeah. Care and candor. You can't have one, you know, because if you have too much care, the kid's ruined. Mm-hmm. The 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 coaching client is ruined. But if you have only candor, they're ruined too. So you've yeah. got to have both. Got to have both. Yeah. And so just to loop back to the main point around this thing is that that behavior with my parents taught me that there is a consequence, whether good or bad to every action. Mm -hmm. And so before I make decisions, I quite literally go, what's the blowback? Mm -hmm. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? And I have to be okay with the worst case scenario in order for me to make that action. And so last night when I was sending that text message, I was like, the worst thing is, is I'm firing somebody at the end of this. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I'm good with it. Cause anybody who associates with these guys, I don't want them in my life anyway. they're bad for the company. Mm -hmm. So eh, it. Yeah. Full sense. Yeah. I'm I'm a big so um I learned this from Diana Ghost as well. Like loyalty is such a big deal. Now, what I mean by that is if you're if you're with me, mm-hmm. be with me. Yeah. You need to have conversations with me. Now, if I don't fix, correct, et cetera, then hey, yes, escalate it to the yep. proper person, right? Um but like I'm not a big fan of like when somebody says, Oh, so and so said such and such about you. My question, I'm not upset at that person immediately my first question is what did you say to defend me mm, so that is what i said last night and whenever all this news hit yeah, I said, if you ain't saying nothing to offend me i don't want to hear them and you uh, and i we are not tight that's that's exactly what i said last night uh in my closing statements on the phone before i said i'm doing this um and it was why are they so comfortable to reach out to that person to talk trash about me and gossip and slander i said god it almost makes it feel like they're joining the end because if you talk trash about my true friend while I'm around, I'm gonna go, hey, yeah, that's that's not cool. Yeah, like what well, did they really do something? Because if yeah. so, then I'll go confront my friend. Because if yeah. somebody acts like that, I probably don't want to be around yeah. them. Well, but but we're not gonna sit here and gossip and lie on people. No. Well, and and my thing is is and my favorite thing if it's something that does not sound like that person, and you're my person, I'm gonna say. That doesn't sound like the Harrison I know. Mm-hmm. Have you talked to him about it? Have you got clarity? Did it come from him? Did you tell him, hey, you, you know, whatever that is? Because if you didn't do that, then talking to me about it is just but gossip. Like to the point, like in my family, my mom will ask me questions about one of my brothers or their wives or whatever. And I'll say, um, well, you need to call them. Yeah. I don't. I'm not going to. Now, obviously, like, because, you know, how's their move going? And A, I'm just encouraging communication, but like that's not my thing to tell you. Yeah. Call them. Yeah. So like they like everybody laughs about it because I'll just be like, call them. Yeah. And then my other brother's like, how come you don't know? You know, you don't know about such and such. I'm like, ain't none of my business. Yeah. I I mind my own business. Yeah. That's right. I, I don't I'm much I got companies to grow and people yeah. to grow and opportunities to make for people and I ain't really got time for all that. No. So um okay. So going back to this, so th- so we're on the the same like so we've kind of went over the things that have went well. Um, the uh, so that is so what are the opportunities? So this is going to be the fun part because I am going to want to defend anything, and so I say that because that's human nature. Um, and yeah, this is the part like where do you feel like I'm not that great at, and then you want to go? Well, hold up, I think I am right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, this is all ex- an opinion. Yeah. That's right. Well, or explain the why. Now, sometimes I do think there needs to be an explanation. And at the same time, you have to hear what they said and process it. Mm-hmm. And so, because there's something in there, if that's how it's showing up, right? And so, and I say that because you're going to see that in me. But whenever people are coming at you with what you could do better or your opportunities, you're asking that question. Are you really asking that question? Because I've been, I've had some clients have asked that question. They're like, everything's great. And I'm like, there's not one thing that you can say to me that will help me get better. Yeah. Like and to, I'm like, so then yeah. we probably don't have a tight enough bot. Yeah, don't tell me I'm perfect because I already know I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and sometimes I have to supply, and I don't think I'll have to do this either, but sometimes I have to supply, <laughs> like, because people don't know, like, 
Sometimes I have to say, like, what about this or this or this or this? Um, and then, like, oh, yeah, yeah, if we could do more of this. Like, okay. Because sometimes people just have never had anybody ask them that question and are, like, legit, like, want to know. Um, and so, uh, but, yeah. So, okay. So, opportunities. And right now we're just talking to THLT companies. Then we'll, uh, we may not, we don't, are not going to have time for the others. Yeah. So, opportunities with the, that you've, See in the last six months. Okay. Um, all right. So there was a, uh, I called you a few weeks ago. Yeah. And, and me and you had a conversation. Uh, so guys, this is the coach, the coach portion yeah. of this show today. Um, and my conversation, uh, you know, we, we got a few uh, uh, housekeeping items out yeah. of the way. We agreed on everything and we moved on. I said, hey, Olivia, I need to talk to you for a second. I said, uh, Olivia uh, teaches every Wednesday uh, in class and every Friday on Zoom. Um and so uh, she had done a class, and we had a, a few uh, agents go into our director's office and just leave some feedback. And uh, and I agreed with the feedback. I was in the class. And um, so I called Olivia, and I uh, said, Olivia, I said, I'd, I'd like an honest question. I answered, and, uh, you know, I, I don't mean to hurt anybody's feelings. So I just want to preface this. Is This is all in love, all right? How do you think you showed up for that class on Wednesday? Mm-hmm. Do you think that you were effective and you were prepared and that you got your point across clearly and you stopped? And what did you say? I said, no. Yeah. And I knew it in the middle of it and I could not self-correct. Yeah. And yeah. It look, it'd be like that sometimes for those of you who have never uh, taught or public. So I don't like to public speak uh, because I do. Uh, so, all right, fun story. Um, we're sitting in the uh, John Ray Realty held a meeting on the buyer agency stuff the other day. And I got the mic uh, to make a statement uh, about agency. And everybody knows I talk a lot. I talk on video. I talk in front of people. I coach classes. Like I do all this stuff. And there's a bunch of people in there who, hey, don't like me. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, a lot of my competitors are in there. And and a lot of people who, I mean, maybe considering a switch were in there as well. And so I don't want to sound like I'm under pressure. I don't want to sound like an idiot. Um, But guys, my vision went from here to here. I could see spots. My blood pressure shot through the roof. I feel like I've been working out. I feel blood running through my biceps and my forearms. And all of a sudden, air got hard to push out of my lungs to talk. I mean, my voice is normally very like demanding and, and, and powerful. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it went from, I was, I was like, you know, I don't like that, shit, you know? And in that moment, people who would say, Harrison, you're, you're a pretty good communicator and you speak well. Yeah. It yeah. did not come out great. Yeah. I bet people are like, the fuck is wrong with this guy? Right? So anyway, yeah. um, now this is the big bad Harrison. He can't yeah. even talk on the microphone. Um, meanwhile, Chelsea Ross is on the microphone just sound like a rock star. You know, yeah. give her that. That girl, yeah. that girl can talk. Yeah. And um, so... Uh, it's hard sometimes to public speak. And then when you get derailed, especially if you feel any kind of pressure, any kind of judgment, if you feel anything, it is so hard yes. to get back on the pony. Yeah. And and two things that I will point out for this is that absolute, and he's 100% right. Like, I walked out of there going, okay, I got to call Harrison this week. Like, it went, I didn't know about the feedback at this point, but I knew that I had screwed up. And interesting enough, it was one of those. And so we're kind of taking this out of this, but it was one of these things that I know so much about. I'm so passionate about, and you can do it like 15 different ways. And so here I am prepping and planning, but you have to prep and plan what you're going to say and then get, decide what you're not going to say and then line it out. Well, I had so many things coming in at one time with all that said, it doesn't matter. It's how you show up, right? right? So a hundred percent, like I could say like, oh, you know, like this is where I can get defensive. But, like, but I pray, nah, nah, nah. all that's true. And if you are uh, leading a class and your goal is to lead um, educated and ready to take action, you have to then go, okay, let me get clear and concise. And I did not do that. And it showed up and it was a total bomb, right? <laughs> um, and I think you have to let people be comfortable with you and hopefully he's comfortable enough that next time he needs to say that he doesn't have to say like with love he can just say hey like we didn't show up well we didn't show up well and i'm gonna yeah. say yes now if i disagree sometimes i might disagree yeah, it's okay to disagree because i might have i might have a different tin of glasses on that day yeah or like, i might have said hey yeah. i was trying to push that button right yeah. but there's a difference between having that conversation and being defensive mm-hmm. because do you want to know my first thought 
because this is human nature. I wanted to go, you're wrong and they're wrong. No, they weren't. You yeah. Know? yeah. I mean, it was legit. It would have been hard to argue with me that day. I <laughs> but, yeah. But, 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 but I still yeah. want to, yeah. right? But because there are, you want to look good and be right. Yeah. yeah. And there's all, there's days, leaders, I'm speaking to leaders right now. Um, there are days where you think you're right and you need to check yourself. Like before we got on this podcast today, I told Olivia, I said, if anything starts coming out negative, I want you to know that it's nothing you've done. Yeah. Nobody, nobody in this room has made me mad or hurt me. I, I went to bed angry because I went to bed angry. I didn't sleep well because I didn't sleep well. I woke up irritated. And then I got text messages this morning and I got one that I really did not like that made my blood pressure go through the roof. And like, that's how I walked in this room. Yeah. And so I had to let them know ahead of time. If I sound like I'm being negative today, if I sound like I'm coming down on you, because I, I, especially when we go to the opportunity portion of this, I said, you just, you may have to interrupt me or you may have to just not have your feelings hurt. And we talk about it later. Well, and that, well, yeah. so that's, so that's the effectiveness of communication, letting people know what and why ahead mm-hmm. of time. Um, cause that, uh, and, and so like when that call conversation you had with me, um, I turned around and this is where you helped me a lot. I knew mm-hmm. that I screwed up mm-hmm. when I had it quite got to is how do I fix it? Mm-hmm. Because I didn't want to wait. But at the same time, you're like, how do you fix it without it becoming a whole thing? Mm-hmm. It needed to be a thing, but not a thing, right? Yeah. And so he was like, uh, we talked, he was like, so I think you may have been asked, you know, what do you think about this or how do you, and so I, that evening, um, I sent out a text message or, you know, in our group chat and said, hey guys, you know, I screwed up or no, I said it at the Friday thing first. Mm-hmm. I was like, Hey yeah. guys, look, this is, I screwed up. I, you, Cause this is the other thing is somebody gave me two hours of their time. That's a, that's an investment. That's an investment. And yeah. so it's like, they're giving me this. So I got to give them this and I did it. And mm-hmm. so you have that conversation. Um, and then, so I said it on there and then I sent a, a message out. And then the next Monday I, I mentioned it as well, because it's not. It's also not fair for me as their coach mm-hmm. to say, "Oh, you went on a listing appointment and you walked away with that listing signed. How come?" Mm-hmm. And they don't have the right to say, "Olivia, you didn't show up well for me." Like I think it has to be mm-hmm. both. You, yeah. it's, you've got to hold, and that's part of what I said. Is like, I'm going to hold you to a high level. I expect you to hold me to a high level as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, because coaching is a high, high paying job, just like taking your listing. Mm-hmm. And if you're not performing, somebody's give you some feedback. That's right. Because you need to learn how to perform correctly. That's right. Yeah. Um, so inside of that, um, so we talked about that where you did not show up. I do think, Olivia, I think that you are an excellent coach. In fact, I, I'll tell you, I'll give you, um, in our coaching calls, I'll give you nothing less than probably an eight out of a 10, which on, in, I'm a, I have a hard scale. Like tens don't exist. So you can go ahead and cut out the fact that you're never going to get a 10 for yeah. you. Right. Um, nine is excellence. Um, and so eight is just those times where we don't always show up. Yeah. It's, you know, we're, we're not, yeah, yeah. we're not going to nail it. Yeah. yeah. And so I think any, any coach who gets an eight out of a 10 for me, that's a winning coach. Um, so I think that your biggest opportunity for the coaching company and for yourself to make, a, to make more money and all that is going to be your ability to prepare to publicly teach. Mm-hmm. Um, which I agree. You're, you're, you're a better coach than you are a teacher in yeah. my opinion. Which is this, so this is funny. I'm the opposite. Well, so this is the funny piece of this is... Or at least I think I'm the opposite. Y'all may go, well, you suck at both. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> well, this is the the interesting thing about that. So for years in mm-hmm. my coaching with my one-on-one, that was the struggle that I had was I was a better presenter mm-hmm. or teacher than a coach. Yeah. So I spent the last on five expands. years becoming um, a better coach. Uh-huh. Because when I uh, trained and I led a bold, so I'd travel across the country and I'd lead bold, I was teaching the same thing every, so like I, like, you know, you, ha, you might like on Monday. It's a script with a slideshow and you right. ran the play. And Monday, yeah. in Monday, that week I might have Monday's class three times mm-hmm. with three different groups. So I got, I was awesome. Right. Mm-hmm. So now every week it's something different that I'm preparing. Mm-hmm. And so a hundred percent. And so I will take that and own it because it, it's funny how that flips. So now for me, it goes into, okay, now I've got, I, what I focused on got better. Mm-hmm. Now I have to step back into here and make sure that I'm prepping. Um, Do you know what the difference is between you presenting then and presenting now? I, I'm going to say what I think, and then you tell me what you think. Sure, go ahead. Okay, so I think two things is, 
it was uh it was already all prepared mm-hmm. and prepared for me so i think that's part of it and then i had a lot a lot of time to practice it mm-hmm. um and i think sometimes now i also get in my head because i'm trying to coach when i should be training mm-hmm. And, uh, and that, like, you have to have, like, this is training, this is coaching, right? It's not the same. Yeah. Uh, you have to ask questions and get the feedback, but I think, so I have to, I have to determine in the material, where am I teaching? Where am I coaching? Yeah. No, I, okay. I completely agree. There is a difference. Um, uh, Debbie DeGroat, um, uh, Ben Kinney's yeah, yeah. Uh, leader of, uh, Ford, uh, coaching. Um, when I went to one of their conferences, I was there with Amy and Amanda in, uh, Phoenix. It was like three years ago, two and a half years ago, something like that. And um, Debbie hosted a class, and it was uh, it was something along the lines of the difference in coaching and teaching, or coaching and training. And um, you know, she went over like a detailed checklist. I wish I still had that notebook. Um, but it was the differences and like how like you, you got to get coached to be a coach, and you got to get trained to be a trainer. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, there's definitely a difference. And I completely everything yeah. you said was spot on. I was going to ask a follow up question to that, and it was just simply this. Who's going to make the money, the creator or the regurgitator? Mm-hmm. And so the difference is, is you someone else created, yeah. they prepared, you learned the play, you regurgitated that play. Now you have to, every single week, yeah. you have the responsibility to go coach some of the top agents. Not every brokerage likes to go, oh, we got some of the top agents in the board. No, seriously. You have the yeah, opportunity like the top, yeah. to go coach the number one, two, and three agents residentially in Northeast Louisiana and and you you get to walk into that room yeah. and step in there, and that's also a tough place to be. Well, yeah. So this is the other thing that I thought about is uh, if you think about a pastor, mm-hmm. every week they've got to deliver a sermon, mm-hmm. right? And so they've got to prep it, they've got to practice it, they've got to do all those things, same things. And so two things uh, that I have determined for like as we move into this next six months is number one, I've got to determine those get it lined out, get it where I want it, practice it, all those things. And also, um, um, uh, there are going to be some changes that I want to make. And if you'll notice when I first started with you, like I would move the table so that I could stand here and it would write. Well, then it was like, okay, that's kind of a pain in the butt. So I stopped. Well, guess what? It is very important how the, the, how the class happens. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have to be on my game, but where I'm standing, how I'm standing, where I can move, how they can see things, all of that matters. Well, now, and so we're the combo of in the class and the Zoom. So that's my next opportunity, I think, as well, is to go, okay, when we're doing it that way, Mm -hmm. how do we have to do it so that it lands at a high level for both? Mm -hmm. And so I I completely agree with that. Yeah. I think that's a huge opportunity. And in the future for the training room, I can already tell you how we're going to do it. There's going to be a camera hooked up to a laptop that's going to um, digital and they can log in and it's going to be a presenter style. So they're not mm-hmm. going to have the opportunity to like do feedback and stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. virtual. Well, and so, but it, they will get a better presentation yeah. uh, because they'll be able to see you plus the slide mm-hmm. and you'll be good. That's to go. right. Well, yeah. and I'll probably also have somebody there mm-hmm. and take a moment to like, well, so we can go all in, but a hundred percent. So we're a hundred percent that that's an opportunity. Yeah. Um, that is probably my biggest opportunity for you. Um, because I think that that's your next level and just knowing what your ambitions are. Mm-hmm. Like, I know that you would, I mean, I, I don't know if a conference is in your wheelhouse, but a workshop, a weekender, yeah. something like that, um, which I, I would well, love to do, yeah, like, you know, yeah, you know, like literally I'm doing that at the chamber on, um, uh, Thursday or Friday, this Friday. Yeah. Um, uh, well, so, and so it, it, again, it's so funny that, well, like that, but that, yeah, that's the, but you're having, to, you're having to weekly, sometimes twice weekly, create, learn the presentation, learn the script, review it a hundred times. Like, this is why I quit teaching as much. It's like, you guys expect me to take 200, 300 listings a year and teach twice a week. And guys, I don't just, I'm not so knowledgeable about life that I can go, I think I'm just going to teach on accountability today and, yeah. and not go listen to five podcasts, take the best of everything I got out of that, create new notes, come up with new thoughts, create a script, then create the slideshow, and then go present. Yeah. That's a legitimately for me to speak for an hour to two hours is a full day's worth of work in preparation. Well, so, well, and that's if you, so 
for every hour that you're going to uh, nail something, and I mean at a really high level, that's eight hours of prep. That does not include, that's the prep to teach it. Mm -hmm. The research and things that happen before, it's even longer. Well, if you're a professional presenter and coach or teacher, you're living in education. That's right. If you're not yeah. spending 30 minutes to an hour reading books, listening to podcasts, if not longer per day, then I can almost promise you, in fact, I think I can very well guarantee you that you will not be successful in that field. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, because I only have, I have a limited amount of time to do those things every day. Yeah. Um, you know, you say that I'm driving all the time and I can listen to podcasts, but I'm on the phone, homie. Yeah. The radio on my, I'm not even sure if the radio in my car works. Yeah. Because it ain't never been on. Yeah. I am on the phone, lead generating, follow up, putting out fires, coaching, training, recruiting, yes. retaining, whatever. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so that's the, so we are, I am going to, um, uh, so I've got a plan for that and I'm going to be, um, sharing some things that I'm going to do differently. And I'm going to talk about some of the different things that we do. I want to still do, I mean, obviously like I like that we do the Wednesday thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm probably going to change up the Friday thing because mm -hmm. the, uh, well, I will, but yes. Yeah. So we're in, we're in agreement there. Yep. Um, all right. You ready for my last thing? Yes. All right. Olivia, you were in professional sales before you yes. were a coach. When you go present, what is the most important thing when you get face to face with somebody in order to make a connection? So I want to go. My first step is uh, my first thought is you open the door. Oh yeah, how you're dressed, what they see. First step, yeah. Well, I, said, no? I, well, okay. I won't even go in there. No, because okay. you always you you ninety five percent of the time you show up your business your business casual. You're good. Yeah. We all get sick or have bad days. I'm not worried about that. Yeah. What is it? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I'm, okay, I'm so not following. All right, all right. So I'm going to... Think of your face, your smile. I don't know. Jesus, we were way off here. <sighs> okay. So I open the door and I go, hey, Olivia, how you doing today? How are you going to talk to me? Well, I'm going to match that energy. Exactly. I yeah. open the door and I go, hey, Olivia, how are you yeah. going to talk to me? Yeah. You have a very overpowering personality. You and I both what? know that. What? Yeah. Why would you tell me? <laughs> Bullshit. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Olivia on the if you study disc, um that the 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 D is the you know the the bull in a china shop trait. You remember when I said that there's no tens? We found a ten in the D, and that is Olivia. That is Olivia. You know, you think? I don't think so. Are you, she's lying. I think I did <laughs> and so, well, I think that my challenge is I'm a DCI, mm -hmm. so it's so like a lot of people that are DIs, they uh, just DIs or whatever. I'm, I'm a DI. DI. Yeah. So it's talk too much, forcefully impose well, their will, and yeah. My C comes out is like when I get like if I'm into something and you talk to me, it's hard because I like. It's hard for, that's a challenge for me mm -hmm. to change, like I'm focused here to then hear your tonality. Mm -hmm. um, if I, and that's, I think that's the difference of like when I was with Bold, I was there for one thing, that was my focus. And so like, that was the tonality, right? Yeah. Well, you're, when you're presenting to the masses, I think you have to basically have that DI personality. Mm -hmm. You've got to fake it at the yeah. very least, because if you get on there with an SC personality, well, one plus one that's right. Does indeed equal, equal to. to. Well, like nobody yeah. wants to hear that. But hey, guys, let's talk about math today. Yes. One plus one equals two. Correct. Like yeah. getting crowd feedback, you know, getting amped. Yeah. Like that is, I mean, that's quite literally the root of my personality. Yeah. Um, well, and so this is, so actually it's. Mirror and match it's coaching. Mirror and Yes. Setting, especially, or a consulting setting. That's right. Well, so this is the interesting that you mentioned that because one of the things that, uh, so I've got, so in my head, because mm -hmm. I've, I've had this thought, now this is where I'm trying to, to tell you, me. You disagree with here. me on this one, don't you? No, no, no. I okay. Don't. No, All no, right. I don't. All right. Uh, but so I, I thought about that because like sometimes I'll go in finishing up or, or reviewing what I'm going to do. So I've been my, here, the problem with that is I'm in the, meeting room where people are coming in mm -hmm. you see how like those don't those don't job so um one of the things so like the last three weeks um i've made sure that when i'm when i walk in that's all done so that i now i can be in my shaking hands kissing babies mm -hmm. because that you know does that make sense because like sometimes your presence is not good unless you're being there with your presence yeah 
And so I think that's kind of the expectation thing again. So like, let's say that I need to print some things out and I need to do such stuff for my later, then I need to come in and go into Jade's office Mm -hmm. because now versus being in the, uh, the training room Mm -hmm. or in, you know, because that's people are congregating, they're talking there. It's very casual. And if I'm over there, like doesn't feel good. Yeah. For so yeah, so I do think that I have to like uh for me the way my mind works, gotta compartmentalize those pieces, yeah, and so that I can go okay, this is this is my shake hands, kiss babies. That means like so at the beginning of bold, I had to like learn to um make sure I only came out at a certain time and then do a I knew what questions I was going to ask you when I shook your hand and talk to you and that type of thing, and I've mm-hmm. got to. To transition that here, yeah. I, I, I agree with you. Well, but I don't think in the in coaching and consulting, I don't think you're going to be scripted. I think it. Oh, no, I no. think I think mirror because while you're coaching and consulting, guys, what do you like? She's there to help and to give her opinion and to take excellent notes. But ultimately, especially at the very beginning, before she can go around telling you what's going on, the first thing she has to do, just like in a listing appointment, is build rapport and gain trust. Mm-hmm. Because until people trust you the care, and they care. don't and, and they don't th- and they think you care, mm-hmm. they don't care what you have to say. That's right. And so I believe that because you sit in your natural the natural pool of your personality is that you need to remember to and I say you need to, it is my opinion that um you should take time to ask effective questions, mirror and match to be like them. Yep. And then gain trust, under, understand all that, and then begin to coach, but at the same time, not overpower yes. them. Um, I think it's re- important to remember where people want us and where they do not. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Well, yeah. and that's where, so when you think, so I think of every life as a script, <laughs> mm-hmm. because that's the way my mind works. I mean, I'm quite literally scripted yeah. in 90% of the areas of yeah. my life. Yeah. So, what I, so what I mean by like at the beginning of Bold, I knew, so I knew that I was going to ask questions. So if you came up to me and you said like, hey, you know, I'm excited about being bold or hey, where's the bathroom? Mm-hmm. And oh, and by the way, I'm George. I knew I was going to match that and say, oh, George, so yeah, I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, what is it you're looking to get out of Bold? Or what, right, but it was all about asking questions. Mm-hmm. And I a hundred percent um uh agree i agree with everything that you said i think yeah. we might be talking about do like the implementing it mm-hmm. where you may have some uh i think the words that we're using may be different but i 100 percent agree with what you're saying yeah yeah that's it that's my list i gave okay. you my good and my bad okay yeah take it yep excellent coach opportunity in presenting and training and being prepared i would really like to see there's a, I'm not saying I agree with it. And yet, if you look at the most popular speakers in the world, and then a lot of this includes pastors, like excellent pastors, um, like these big mega churches, look, those guys, that, that doesn't mean they're any more godly than the guy who preaches at the local Baptist church, yeah. right? But there's a, there's something that they have, and it's that they are an excellent speaker. Yeah. And they are extremely well prepared. Man, look, there are some, I, I actually will go to church sometimes. I say go to church, listen to a podcast by a pastor, church, church in my room. Um, yeah. And, uh, and it's because like they have great speaking methodology yes. there. Some of these guys are, and I don't, I'm going to use the word like paid speakers. They are, but that like, well, maybe not the root of why they do right, what right, they do. But, there uh, is. but like, I mean, they are, they are excellent entertainers. Mm-hmm. Oh, a hundred percent. And that's where, cause even with, with bold, you had the material, mm-hmm. and then you learned how to present it in such a way that mm-hmm. it was captivating. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and you and, did an excellent job at that. And so now, because like I said, so for so many years, like my focus was, okay, I have that here. Now I've got to be better at this. Now it's just, now it is bringing those two together, and where am I wearing the hat at? Mm-hmm. And no, I absolutely agree. Yeah. I think that's an opportunity. Yeah. And I think that if you can do, because I, I do believe, I believe your coaching ability uh, is is up there. It, it, it's, it's, you do a good job there. It is the other piece that if you can ever put those two things together, um, I think you're going to get where you want to go. Love it. I appreciate it. Yeah. Take it. Yeah. That wasn't okay. that bad, right? No. Yeah. Um, I, mean, and I, yeah. I didn't want, I didn't want you to get your feelings hurt, but yeah. I, I, I was extremely honest in that. Yeah. So. Well, and, and so, and the thing is, is it's very possible that something will come up between now and, you know, you go, oh, I didn't mention this. We'll mention it and then we'll we'll yeah. go forward. We'll treat it just like um, we did right here. That's right. Yeah. Um, because the ne- and and again, I know like 
you get to see us do this, but I think, are you doing this with people? Yeah. Are you paying attention to how you're presenting it, how they're taking it? Because it all matters. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, uh, one thing and I- it's all about how do we get each other better? Because vice versa, real quick, mm-hmm. I've done this with Harrison too. Like he's had some truths that he did at light or whatever oh. and like you think you've said that before if you're just like i'm never going to talk to a living again <laughs> oh yeah there were some times uh, where I've, I've like just said i just want yeah. to get off the phone um i'm i, I can't take any more today yeah. but then i have to go swallow that right um one thing i want you to know is if you're watching this and you're learning something first of all, i want you to know that nothing in this is scripted no, uh, we just I, uh, when i walked in today i told olivia like you know i warned her about my night and my day and how it was going and she goes, oh, well, maybe we'll do this another day. And I was like, no, no, no. I'll, I mean, I can do it. But just if I get negative, like, you know, whatever. But this is actually a great model for you to take notes on and go, this is how I'm supposed to have effective communication that someone else may not love hearing. Mm-hmm. And it's just, hey, this is just mutual respect. This is, hey, Olivia, you did something wrong that I didn't really like. No, I don't. That doesn't mean I have to call Olivia and go, hey, you suck. You didn't do this right. It's just a. Hey, Olivia. Yeah, this is well. You, yeah, well, and part of it is so you have for any great team relationship. If you now nobody ever likes to give bad news or say no, like, "Hey, awful. you didn't, you weren't at a hundred percent." But if you don't, if you have to tiptoe, that's probably not your person. Or you have to get with a coach or somebody and figure out how to learn communication skills so that you can have that conversation because otherwise. You're all like, that's as much as you can grow. So you have to be willing to have the conversations. And then also when people give you feedback to be willing to look at things differently. Um, cause I actually, in my head, I'm thinking that you were, I still think you were probably way, um, I think there's a lot more opportunity for me than what you said. So that's the other thing is sometimes we can be harder on ourselves than yeah. I mean, those other are, people. those are things that I have identified, like the things that I've thought about, like, hey, whenever me and Olivia get the opportunity to talk. Um, you know, then, then we'll talk yeah. about these things. Um, there was nothing, if anything is bad, bad, we don't wait. Oh, yeah, we, yeah. we, we call that and that address. Like when we day. had that day, yeah, like yeah, yeah. that was a, like Olivia was on my, you call her before 12 o'clock because yeah. we try to do things that we don't want to do first. Yes. Swallow the frog so you can go have a good day. Yes. Um, I, I, I did, I did the opposite of that a few weeks ago and it ate my whole day up. Oh, yeah. I just felt it in my heart. I had, I, I knew I was going to have a hard conversation that day. And I didn't want to have it. And so I just waited and waited and waited. And I finally it called it like six o'clock at night. And I'm like, well, hell, now I need more whiskey. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. and if I'd have just done it, I could have washed yeah. it down with a protein drink rather than a whiskey. You yeah. Know? Well, and a lot of times too, like if, if you aren't having that conversation with that person that's taking responsibility, like they're getting defensive, um, that's a problem too. Now, with yeah. that said, if they get, depending on the conversation, if they get defensive, it might have it might have nothing to do with you. Maybe it was like the wrong timing or something. But yeah. give them a moment. I'm not saying like if I would have been defensive on that call that Harrison would be like, you're fired. He might have been like, you know what? Let's see. And if I didn't call him back within 24 hours and fix it, mm-hmm. or go, you know what? I don't know that I necessarily, but tell me more. Yeah. That's probably not the right person. Mm-hmm. You have to have somebody that is willing to at least see what where you're coming from. Um. And because that's how you're showing up in the world. And and it's almost like, you know why I just learned this? Do you know why we all love selfies better than our, when our pictures are taken, when we take it? I have no idea. So a selfie, it, when we look at our, I know a mirror, that's not actually us looking back. It flips our, right? Uh-huh. So a lot of times we think we're more attractive than we are. Uh, oh, really? So the statistic I read was that you're like 20% more attractive than you think you are. Could be. But either way, we don't look at ourselves the way that the other people do. Because when you look at me, right, uh-huh. you're looking at me here. But when I look in the mirror, I'm flipped. Yeah. So that's why we like the selfies is because we get to control that. And that's what we see in the mirror. Mm-hmm. So, but that's not what other people see. It's the same reason we don't like the sound of our voice because uh-huh. it's, it's, sound of my voice. Yeah, it's vibrating in the, our ears and how, but when we get the feedback and it's on a recording, we don't have the vibration. So we don't think it sounds like us, right? Uh-huh. So all of those, so you have to ask, is this really how I'm showing up? Because the way we think we are and the way we are, completely different. Uh, Because if I hadn't been told my whole life, Olivia, like you're a very strong personality, I tend to think I'm kind of (laughs) timid. You lying to yourself. Right? Even the cameraman's laughing at that 
Well, but it's because also imagine what's going on in my head, like that I thought a lot about that I wanted to say that I didn't. Or whatever, right? Right. It's um, only you do. I thought I was a filter I name here. I thought my face looked happy, not crazy. So yeah. you have to have that feedback. So what I'm going to actually suggest then um, is I do think this was great. Um, hopefully you guys got something from it. I'm thinking that next Saturday. Uh-huh. What if we took that time and we went ahead and utilized, okay, based on what we talked about today, let's create our game plan for the next three to six months. Mm -hmm. Um, I am also going to, uh, I'm going to ask the agents on the team, those I'm going to put together like a thing and I'm going to send them and get their feedback as well, like a survey. I think that would actually be a great idea. And, um, and yeah. And so I'm going to send that out. And then, so I'll bring that. So that'll be some feedback as well. And yet we will be able to then go, okay, so from here, what's our game plan for the next? How will we know that it's working? And uh, then everybody can see that as well. Yeah. I'm down. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. All right, guys. We appreciate y'all being here with us yes. today. Uh, for for those that watch, it's actually very flattering. I, oh, I, think, I yeah. appreciate your time. I hope you get something out of it. We try to give a little bit of our lives, a little bit of fun, uh, and then a little education. There are. I do want to try a format. Um, so I was actually listening to Ben Kenny um, this week. Yeah. Because uh, I was struggling uh, with something, and I just went and found one of his podcast yeah. that was identifying that that topic. And I was like, you know, I would really like to do a. Um, like maybe one week you prepare to present and then I'll commentate and then mm-hmm. I do it the next week. And, but we, we pick our topic and, and then let's present and, and let's do maybe, I don't know, some leadership stuff, maybe some financial stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know that I publicly want to give any financial advice, but <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, I'm not bad at I, it I yet. I have my, I have my own methodology. That's what I can teach you what not to do. And I can teach you what I've learned, but it's not like you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. well, so, the funny thing, so, okay, so this is where you get started, and then, so, when we first decided the, to do the podcast, that's the way my, my, my mind works. We need that format, we need it up. I know the way that, because we talked about this, like. Yeah, we've just been going, we had a scripted, not a dang no. second of this thing in 16 episodes. Well, yeah. that, because you were like, no, let's just get on and talk. And my, at the beginning of this, I was like, that made my whole stomach, like, not, I was not comfortable oh, with that. When you and I talk on the phone. One of us literally has to go. Hey, I have something I have to go do because me and her can sit on the phone for an hour at a time and, and not even blink, and yet neither one of us really have an hour to give. Yeah. So, uh, but it, it, and and funny enough, most people in my life would not say that. I think you and maybe one or two other people are the only people that I have long conversations with on the phone. I like, bet I'm you, not a big you, Chuck and Avery can probably yeah, talk. We can for talk. all yeah. Um, and so okay, so with all that said, there was a point here I was making about oh so. This is where I wanted to go, and I knew if we start, and for not just you, but me, I knew if we started with another thing that uh-huh. we were trying to, like, be amazing at, we'd never start. Yeah. And so when you said that, it wasn't comfortable for me, but I was like, yes, because you just have to start. Yeah. And then you learn, and you hear, and you decide. So I love that we're going to go to that. That's awesome. Yeah. And that's actually, I think it's going to be good for me, because A, a uh, whatever we do on here, we can regurgitate on Wednesdays, so well, we can. The more you teach it, the better we can. You get tra- at we can it. train the trainer, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so uh, we're going to get better at uh, at at, yes. at presenting. Well, and so for you guys that are listening, we are about to. I haven't even told Harrison this. We are about to um, uh, make a million dollars. Make a million dollars. And in addition to this, I do want to do some specific pieces um and that they're going to be able to see on like facebook and things of that effect so we'll talk more about that um super excited about it yeah and uh like kind of have a, a community of uh you know people that are looking for leadership or people looking for this type of thing so uh or hiring things like that yeah. so all right with that said i think this is number 16 down let's see if we've got any better with the let's go we're gonna have to figure so i do better. want you to know that um so i'm not saying that my podcast with daniel um last week was better than mine and yours but i am saying that our high five, high five was better. far superior <laughs> Well, so I'm better at the low five. What well, so we need to just like? No, no, not that. Stand up. You got to get the low five. I'm so scared. Okay, yeah, well, no. you have to admit. Oh, I have to get over here. I have Lily roofing this week. Yeah. That's right. Hold on. All right, send that. Okay. I didn't even know. Whatever has he knows how to do it. So we see the softball. Hey, three times. One, two, three. That's what we always do. That requires so much coordination. Oh, it's just like. I mean that was better. That was better. better. But we gotta go. We gotta go with that. Okay. All right, let's go. Guys, right, that was good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just can't do it from sitting down. Yeah. <laughs> See y'all. See ya.